City Hall. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, it is my pleasure this morning to introduce Lee Bell, President and CEO of the Ybor City Chamber. Uh, no stranger to this community. He represents uh, the business leaders, the community leaders of Ybor City. Uh, a gentleman that really needs no introduction because he is everywhere. Many events involved in, in many different organizations. Uh, Mr. Bell, if you'd like to come on uh, forward and um, go ahead, sir. Thank you for your many and abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health we need to fulfill your calling in, for sustenance and for friendship. Thank you for your ability to be involved in useful work and for your honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. Thanks as well for the freedom to embrace you or the freedom to reject you. Thank you for your loving, us even so, for your boundless and generous nature. Amen. Amen. And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank here. Vieira. Here. Miranda. Here. And Maniscalco. Here. We have a physical quorum. Thank you. Mr. Shelby, do you want to go over everything now or until after? Okay. Um, it is uh, my pleasure now that uh, we go to the swearing in of our newest member of Tampa City Council. Council member elect Hertak soon will be Council member Hertak. And uh, how do you wish to do it? Go down there? Okay. If you'd like to go down, uh, Shirley Fox Knowles will. Do this wearing it. I state your name. I am Angela Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear that I will support that I will support a home, a home, and defend the charter and defend the charter and ordinances and ordinances of the city of Tampa, of the city of Tampa, the Constitution and laws. Constitution and laws of the state of Florida, of the state of Florida, and the Constitution and laws, and the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, of the United States of America. That I'm a resident, that I'm a resident, and elector, and elector of the city of Tampa, of the city of Tampa, and am, and am entitled to hold, and am entitled to hold the office of the office of council member of the city of Tampa, council member of the city of Tampa. To which I've been appointed. To which I've been appointed. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully perform the duties of said position. The duties of said position. Into and of which. Into and of which. I'm about to enter. I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I, Amanda Lynn Hurtak. A citizen of the state of Florida. A citizen of the state of Florida. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. And being employed by. And being employed by. Or an officer of. Or an officer of. The city of Tampa, Florida. The city of Tampa, Florida. And a recipient of public funds. And a recipient of public funds. As such employee or officer. As such employee or officer. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear or affirm, or affirm that I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and of the State of Florida, and of the State of Florida. Congratulations. Welcome to the family. All right, we're going to take a five minute recess because members of the uh, council members family are here. Uh, five minute recess for photographs and, and whatnot. Then we'll uh, come back, do the new roll call and start the meeting. We are in recess for five minutes.
Goods. Here. Hertag. Here. Cedro. Here. Vieira. Miranda. Here. And Maniscalco. Here. We have a physical quorum. All right, uh, Mr. Shelby, before you, be, uh, you begin, uh, USF student government was supposed to be touring City Hall today. I don't know if they were here or are here now or going to be coming later, but I just want to acknowledge them. Uh, I don't see anybody in the audience, but go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. All right. Mr. Shelby, go ahead, sir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Members of the Tampa City Council, Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney, uh, today is the seventh day of April of 2022, and uh, we're here at Old City Hall, and this is a regular agenda. The public and the citizens of the city of Tampa are able to watch, listen, and view this meeting on Spectrum Channel 640, Frontier Channel 15, and on the internet at tampa.gov forward slash live stream. Members of the public can attend here in person in city council chambers in Old City Hall on the third floor at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard or virtually participate in this meeting by using what is referred to by the state of Florida statutes and rules as communications media technology. Please know that to speak remotely during public comment during the use of CMT, pre-registration is required. And that information is on the agenda as well as on the notice of today's meeting. And also that is available on tampa.gov forward slash city council. Now to participate remotely in public hearings using CMT, pre-registration is also required and that is also available on the City Council's webpage at tampa.gov forward slash city council. A note to the public that in order to participate in quasi-judicial matters remotely via CMT, cell phones and smartphones are not compatible as they will not allow you to share your camera when connected. You must have access to a CMT device such as a tablet or a computer equipped with a camera and microphone that will enable you to be seen by video and heard by audio by the City Council and other participants. Um, that being said, I believe that um, council, I'm going to ask council to waive the rules to allow for the continuation of CMT uh, until the rules are amended. We have a motion from Councilman Good, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank Any you. opposed? All right, we have a little bit of housekeeping. Item number one per request of Council Member Vieira. Uh, a motion to continue that to April 21st, sir? Uh, yes, sir. We had a, a Ms. Tiffany Davis here for Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and she was unable to make it. It is available on April 21st, so if I may. Motion from Councilman Beard and second from Councilman Miranda to continue item number one to April 21st. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Uh, item number 47, we have Kamaria Pettis-Mackle here. Um, I believe it's to remove item 47. Yes, uh, Kamaria pettis Mackle from the City Attorney's Office. I have been in contact with the petitioner regarding this item, and in discussion with the petitioner, we're asking for this item to be removed from the agenda. Do we have a motion to remove so item 47? Second. Motion from Councilman Citro, second from Councilman Goods. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank item you. number 78, uh, if I could have a motion to move this up to be heard so after moved. administration update. Motion from Councilman Goods, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, item uh, staff report 66 through 79. Uh, please let me know if we need any staff present for any of these items. Uh, item number 66, this is um, a 400, well, $850,000 item. Uh, actually, there is a request to continue 66 to May 5th, 2022, so to allow for additional time. Okay. Motion from Councilman Citro, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's to be continued to May 5th, 2022. Item 67 is a $3 million contract. Uh, Brad Baird sent a memo. Do we need him present for this? I'm satisfied. Anybody? All right. Mr. Baird, you are not needed for 67. Item 68, also a, um, an item uh, with Mr. Baird of $5 million. Do we need the gentleman present at that time for that? I've asked a question to Mr. Baird. This is included in the pipes project. I'm satisfied. Okay. Item number 69 is $6.2 million. Also, Mr. Baird, any questions or uh, does anybody have a request to have him present? Yeah, just, could I just say, follow on uh, what Councilmember um, Cedra just said. I also asked Mr. Baird if these were part of the Pure project, and he said no. So I'm satisfied. All right, we do not need Mr. Baird for number 69. Item number 70, we have a memorandum from Chief Barbara Tripp. This is a $3 million item. Do we need Chief Tripp present for 70? I have spoken with Chief Tripp, and if uh, all the council members would agree, I'm, I'm satisfied as public safety. All right, so number 70, Chief Tripp will not be 
uh, needed to be in person. Item number 71 is a $1.5 million item, also part of number 70. It's a part two of two. <coughs> Any questions? Again, I spoke to the chief. All right. Number 72 is a staff, uh, staff two report on the Vila Brothers Park, which was my item. I think, uh, we, I think we should, just for the sake of the public, we should have. I agree. I think we should too. I mean, I've been in contact with Mrs. Martha Vila and I want to, you know, make sure and, and, and others in the neighborhood, they know what's going on. I know we have the report, but I'd like the public to hear. So 72 will have somebody, uh, which would be Miss Osea Wynn. Um, to be present, number 73. Um, if I may, for 73, you know, we have a detailed memo. I'm actually going to motion for this to return to us in 60 days okay. um, for um, Tampa Fire Station 24. Uh, it, it notes, uh, I, I guess, the USF part of town, it's more 33647 um, and whatnot. I mean, I don't think we need Chief Tripp here for this, um, but I am going to speak on this whenever the, the time comes. Would you like June 2nd or June 16th? Those are both regular sessions. Why don't oh, what are we in? Uh, we're in yeah, that's great. Yep, let's do June 2nd if I may. All right, we have a motion from Councilmember Vieira to continue item number seven. Or not to, if I, if I may, sir, thank you. Um, not to continue, but to have it come back for an updated mm -hmm. report on these two stations and their status. Okay, so, an so we'll deal with it today, uh, but it'll come back for a continued scrutiny on those. Are you days. going when you say deal with it today? Do you mean you're going to be at? You want staff to, to come on uh, that item today? No. Whenever the item comes up, we can discuss it, and I'll talk about my uh, uh, thoughts, etc. But without staff. but staff. I don't need Chief Trip here unless if you she want, wants to. Do you want to hold the memo till then, or do you, yes. I mean the motion till then, or do you want to? Um, I can do it now. Okay. So we have a, a motion from Councilman Sorry. Vieira. Mm -hmm. For June 2nd, under staff reports, uh, second from Councilman C. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Item number 74. Um, no, and if I may, sir, that's. Oh, no, actually, that was yours. I'm it's sorry. my motion, but I mean, what do you. How do you feel about it? Oh, this? actually, no, it was mine. Was it Vera Citro? Yeah, oh, to well, reschedule. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't. I mean, again, I, I, I just wanted some information here. The report is very detailed. I don't. Uh, for the sake of the staff, I don't need them here. We can discuss okay. it if anybody has any thoughts. But I don't. I don't right. need staff. We'll discuss without staff. Uh, any questions will come up then. All right. Item number seventy-five. That's Tampa Fire Rescue. Also, uh, Councilman Vieira. That's your motion. Oh. Um, Regarding response times to three three six. Oh Lord, so. I'm sorry. May I? I'll come back to you if you want. Thank you. Okay. If I item pay. number 76, we have a memo from Osea Wynn, um, Parks and Rec, uh, to report on uh, a Youth Advisory Council. That is a motion by Councilmember Goods. Uh, would you like someone present, sir? Yes. All right. Item number 76, we'll have somebody present. Item number 77, this is a motion uh, originally from Dinkfelder, seconded by Carlson. This is... Uh, Specific policy recommendations that re uh, discuss requirements and incentives based on the Fort Lauderdale model and research. Do you wish to have somebody here? We do have a report from Stephen Benson. Yeah. I think it would be worth um, at least a couple of minutes if they're available. Okay. Um, just to right. we'll see have, if there's uh, anything we should do. Following. Stephen Benson uh, <laughs> available for 77. Uh, Chief of Staff and CFO. I know the Chief of Staff is here. Uh, the collaborative process between the administration and council to creating the next budget. Um, that's a motion by Councilman Carlson. Was the Budget Advisory Council going to uh, appear in person here, sir? Uh, they discussed it yesterday at their meeting, and uh, their chair, Joseph Johnson, is going to be um, uh, in, in the chambers and available. And I mean, okay. may wish to address council on it. Okay. The, the purpose of this, I talked to the CFO yesterday, the purpose of this motion was just to have the CFO hear from us about what our ideas are about the, how the process should be handled. Okay. You know, the, in the last year or two, um, Chief of Staff proposed a process to try to get feedback from us, which is a lot better than how things have been done before. But just it, you all may have ideas on how it could be done better. Okay, so, that, so we'll that keep was the we'll keep at least uh, Chief of Staff uh, and uh, Mr. Rojero uh, here, and then we have the uh, the gentleman from the um, the Citizens uh, Board. All right, so that's that. Seventy nine. This is to discuss an additional City Council meeting to be added to the calendar to address the backlog. The original motion was Councilmember Vieira, and I seconded it. Anything, sir? I mean, we'd have to. I'm sorry, I was looking for something on 75. What was that, sir? This is about adding an additional council meeting. Oh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll okay, need to so discuss we'll, that. Yes. We'll need to Please. do that. And last mm -hmm. is uh, Mr. Shelby regarding the charter review workshop. Of course, you're here, so you're here. And 
if I may, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, 75 was actually going to be um, an in-person report. So uh, for Chief Tripp, whenever that comes up, um, it, it appears that there is no report for that. Um, if, if my understanding was incorrect, I'll just have administration folks just contact me uh, in the meanwhile if, if my understanding is incorrect. Okay, so no one, uh, Chief Tripp not here for 75. Yes, Okay. yes, uh, for, for the time being. I'll, 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 in our break or whatever, I'll discuss because okay. I may have had a misunderstanding. I, I typically try to, if, if staff doesn't need to be here, I typically try to not have them, but this uh, may necessitate that, so. Oh. Yes, sir. So, so yes. if I can just be clear, are you then um, asking staff to be on, Chief Chair, to be on standby for that? Are you going to just say no? Yeah, I'll, I'll step outside and I'll speak to her in the meanwhile to see if it's uh, something that necessitates it. So I'll, I'll deal with it. But for now, yes, subject to change. All right. That concludes uh, the list that I have. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have a letter from Andrew Carnegie. <clears throat> Requesting that item number 58 be continued to May 5th. And that, and that is a 1030, and that is a 1030 public hearing. Yes, sir. So we'll have to take it up at that time. All right. So May 5th at 1030, yeah. time certain. Do we have a motion for that continuance? No, uh, so, sir, no, that we cannot do that because you cannot continue it until sometime after 1030. Oh, okay, okay, so we'll leave that, I'm sorry. Um, same thing with item number 60, it's a 1030. Um, item and number 62 is a motion to withdraw. We'll, we'll deal with that when we open the public hearing. That's at correct. 1030. Thank you. Is there anything else? If not, may I have a motion to approve the so agenda moved. and the addendum? A motion from Councilman Citro, second from Councilman Goods. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Ceremonial activities, not ceremonial, but necessary. We have the Florida Department of Transportation to update council on projects within the city of Tampa, there is a PowerPoint. Following the presentation, we'll go to public comment. Is FDOT available virtually or in person? Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Bide. Morning, yes, sir. Morning, Council. Uh, FDOT is available uh, and they should be logging in right now. We have Craig Fox, uh, pd and &E project manager with FDOT. Before Craig uh, gets going, I'd like to share uh, the two projects that FDOT is going to present today and how they fit into our strategy. The first is Tampa and Florida Multimodal Project. This was, of course, the RAISE grant that both FDOT and the city won. Uh, and FDOT was kind enough to supplement funding to complete the project funding. This project is critical to support our streetcar extension, uh, the BRT project that both Hart and the city are working on, uh, TOD plans that we're working with Hart on to ensure that we, uh, we bundle housing and transit together. And this is something we're going to do more off citywide. Uh, and then finally, the Fowler Avenue piece uh, of the BRT project which will ultimately connect downtown to USF, which is in the city and region's long range transportation plan. So both of these projects are critical. They'll bring all kinds of improvements, uh, particularly our commitment to low to no cost access for Tampanians to jobs. Uh, having said that, I will hand it over to Craig Fox. Craig, take it away. Thank you, Vic, and thank you all for having me here today. Um, I'm just, just need the ability granted to me to share my screen. I don't think I have that right now. So somebody could grant me that ability. Ah, there we go. Thank you. All right, can everybody see the screen? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Excellent, thank you. So, um, so my name is Craig Fox of Florida DOT, and we'll just get right into the update on these two projects. First, we're going to start with the Tampa Street Florida Avenue multimodal project. The, pro the project limits of this project are from Tyler Street to the, on the southern end to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard on the northern end. Uh, this is going to be a project that is uh, going to be broken out in phase construction. Um, so we're going to have one portion go first, and the second uh, portion to the north uh, go after it. Uh, but the general public, it'll look like this one whole same project. The work to be done is, is it will provide the opportunity for a future transit lane, exclusive transit lane. 
provide new and upgraded drainage in areas where today there are no, in some places, no drainage actually exists because the road is so old. It would also provide roadway reconstruction to bring it up to modern standard standards, provide wide sidewalks, space for enhanced BRT spots, and also provide intersection, intersection improvements throughout the project corridor. The existing typical section is shown on the screen and it ranges from uh, three 10 foot to 12 foot lanes, both on Tampa Street and Florida Avenue, with a five foot to seven and a half foot sidewalk um, in certain areas. Now, what I have shown on the screen now is the proposed ultimate typical section. This would involve a lane reduction that would also add an exclusive transit lane on both Tampa Street and on Florida Avenue, and also provide the opportunity for wider sidewalks. Now, I do want to note that this is the proposed ultimate typical section. As we all know, uh, HART is currently going after seeking additional funding, and once that funding is realized, we'll be able to add in the BRT elements. But um, like Vic mentioned, this is providing a lot of the groundwork that needs to be done. There's some uh, very important drainage structures that need to be placed to get ahead of the streetcar so we don't have to come back in the future and interrupt the streetcar line. And so we're, and we're going to also create the space for future enhanced BRT stations. So um, in the initial project, you may not see the BRT elements, but we're producing all the groundwork that'll enable that for the ultimate typical section. And that'll be very easy to implement because it's just adding some curbs here and there and uh, to in order to make that BRT happen. The next I want to touch on is just an analysis of the uh, level of service, a projected level of service with lane reduction. Of course, that it is a known concern um, whenever we reduce the lane on the roadway. So what we have shown is a typical is a no build intersection level of service in the design year. And the next slide, I have the build condition. So this is the option without uh, the BRT lanes. And this option here shows with the BRT lane. So I went ahead and highlighted some of the intersections um, that change the level of service. You'll notice that they, I'll switch back and forth just a second. So they go from C to D, which isn't that drastic of a change. And actually in one scenario on Florida Raska Avenue, you'll see it in the existing design, well, in the design year, a no bill, that's a D. And in the future condition, it's projected to be a C. So we have a little bit of improvement there for Nebraska and the rest of the corridor, you don't see major reduction in the level of service, which is very good. Um, uh, that we can have that increased transit uh, without uh, detrimental effects to the roadway. So this design is in progress as we speak. Contractor procurement is slated to begin the summer of 2022 and construction is slated to begin in spring of 2023. Now the next part I want to mention is the Fowler Avenue multimodal pd study. We're very excited about this project. The study limits go from the west end of Florida Avenue all the way to the east end at 56th street and there are two major components within this project and those are highlighted on, highlighted on the screen as a median guideway and also the innovative intersections on the next slide i'll show some examples for the median guideway for the innovative intersections we're going to take a look at ways that we can increase the increase the efficiency of the roadway uh, between bruce b downs and bull run drive the and, and and also throughout the entire limits of the study we are looking to add a shade use pass on both sides of the roadway whenever possible so the study begins this spring we just finished negotiations so we're anticipating execution of the contract very shortly uh, the public alternatives workshop that'll occur in late 22 or early 2023 with design that begins as early as 2024 construction is 2026. now uh, i do want to note again that this is tied pretty much tied in with the uh with the heart study of arterial BRT. So the this construction funding may be dependent on the availability of, of HART to provide the operation and maintenance for that route. Uh, but we want to get all the groundwork um, out of the way, get the study out of the way so we have a clear environmental document so the department isn't delaying um, any future transit along this corridor. But it's a very exciting project. And now I'll go to the three alternatives we're looking at for the median guideway portion. The first option is a business access transit lane. And in all, three options, you'll notice that we are reducing uh, the lane on Fowler Avenue from four lanes to three lanes, general purpose lanes in each direction. Uh, so the first option is a business access transit lane. We actually have uh, an example of one of these in construction right now in Pinellas County as part of the Sun Winter Project with PSDA that will open later this summer. So that's, that'll be an example folks can look at for a business access transit lane. Uh, the second alternative is a frontage road system that's shown on the screen. And third one is a median transit way. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're definitely excited for this project and we look to have more information to the public close to the end of this year um, so we can get more public participation and go ahead and select um, the transit alternative. 
So I have to thank everybody for your time this morning. I want to remember, uh, remind everybody to be alert today, alive tomorrow. Safety doesn't happen by accident. And now I have to open up for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. A wonderful presentation on some of our busiest uh, corridors. Uh, historically, Tampa Street, Florida Avenue, they were not those one-way streets. I think 60 years ago is when the traffic pattern changed uh, through the Heights and through Seminole Heights and Tampa Heights. Um, and it's good to see that it's going back to a pedestrian focus instead of just moving cars on the road. Because if you look at the numbers on Tampa Street, um, you know, they are never near capacity. They are never, I mean, it's my, I don't use the interstate. I get downtown Tampa Street. I'm, I'm in City Hall and 12 minutes or less. But um, also we have people that bike going down uh, Tampa Street, coming into downtown from the Heights and in the reverse direction at Florida Avenue and it's very, very dangerous. Uh, so those are necessary. Uh, Fowler Avenue, uh, also there's Bush Boulevard, another busy, busy road, but uh, Councilman Vieira has worked very, very hard in making sure that uh, those roads change where they're safer. You know, we've adopted Vision Zero. Uh, we, we embrace those policies, but we have to implement the right plan to, to enforce those. So, uh, Councilman Carlson. Yeah, I've said this many times, but um, Fowler Avenue and Bush Boulevard really are Tampa's gateway to the world. Uh, most of the CEOs I've met in Latin America and other places who have been to Tampa have mostly only been to Bush Gardens, and they a lot of them stayed in Orlando, or they stay on the beach, and then they came to Bush Gardens. And so their impression of Tampa is Fowler Avenue and Bush Boulevard. And I know there have been several plans, at least going back to Linda Salsena, to try to uh, beautify those roads. but. Um, Glad you're working on the, the plans you showed for Fowler Avenue, but is there some plan to beautify it or is the city partnering with DOT to, to beautify that so we can make it more of a gateway to the world? If we, and the idea is that so, if, we, if we put on a good impression, they'll want to either move here, invest here, set up, their, um, set up their overseas operations in Tampa. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so as far as um, beautification and aesthetics go, uh, so right now in PDD study, that's not that, that's not something. Well, we identify landscape opportunities, um, but it's but it's just better for those to be handled during the design process. But we are engaging in robust pub. We're going to be engaging in robust public engagement where we look to get input from the community about potential aesthetics. But as part of the study itself, no, the aesthetics won't necessarily be part of that because it's just better to hand handle and design because there'll be more details available, more information known about about you know the actual dimensions of the road and where you can fit certain aesthetics thank you thank you very much anybody else thank councilman Vieira, yes sir uh, thank you very much and yeah and you know what one thing that i want to highlight about this presentation that i really like is is it, it has a dialogue on a lot of um streets in in the city of tampa that were they're very unsafe but they're not always in the news um let's just you know call a fact a fact which is that a lot of times we there there's tragedy that happened on, on hillsborough avenue on, on Reverend Martin Luther King, on Bush, on, on Florida, on Nebraska, on Fowler, and they don't always make the news for one reason or another. They may not make the news, but they certainly got to make our council, and they got to make our city, and they got to make FDOT, because that's where we have the most strategies. Um, all, all of parts of the city of Tampa, of course, have to be protected 110%, but we have to be focused uh, intensely on areas where we have these significant human tragedies. Uh, that just seem to happen again and again and again. If you Google, you know, what are the, the most dangerous streets in, in Tampa, these are going to come up. Hillsboro, Martin Luther King, Bush, uh, uh, Nebraska, Fowler, et cetera. You know, we need to really intensely continue to focus on that. Um, I'll probably make a motion at the end for something of this nature to come back maybe in a workshop in three or four months on, uh, on, on some of these roads because we have to continue to utilize everything that we can. You know, the most important thing that, that we can do, I think, is, a, is a, we obviously have uh, FDOT and, and, and state dollars that said that we can utilize and hopefully effectively and in a smart way that's consistent with, with our community, but is making sure that we can use uh, revenue that comes from the will of the people. You know, yesterday there was a, um, a, a discussion held in county commission on a, on a sales tax. And, and, I, and I'll say it, uh, I, I said it in 16 when I ran, I said it in 18 when, when uh, we voted an offer transportation, 19 when I ran again, and I'll say it again, we need additional revenue to make Tampa and Hillsborough County safe and to be able to connect people better and bring us to the 21st century, really to bring us to the 20th century, if you ask me in some ways. Um, and uh, that's a really critical thing. And without that money, we could catch a break from Tallahassee for the revenue we've recouped over the, uh, over the last two years. But without that money in the future, 
we're going to have some major problems, continue to have these major problems and read about these tragedies uh, continuing to happen. So I uh, just wanted to put my thought on that. But thank you, sir, for your presentation and your focus on these areas. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time and, and the wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Councilman Crossing. Oh, just on, on a separate on a separate topic, I want to ask uh, Marty, the City Council Attorney, question real fast. I have here my my city issued cell phone. Today, I was not able to have access to a laptop, but I would like to have access to Sire so that my aide doesn't have to print the 500 pages. If I look at Sire, which I have open on my on my city cell phone, am I allowed to look at it during a meeting? Am I allowed to look at Sire? I'm not looking at text messages or emails. Am I allowed to look at Sire on my city issued cell phone? Yes. That was it. Can you say the microphone? I, I would. I would say. I would say yes. So th what you're saying then is you're going to be using your city f cell phone to access Sire today, and that's what you're going to be um, um, uh, viewing. Yeah. During and the course and I'm, of the I'm doing it partly for transparency, but also because we know that certain members of the administration are looking at everything we do to try to find the smallest mistakes, and so I want to make sure that the public knows uh, what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, seeing nothing else on item number two, we're going to go to public comment. If you're here in person. As you approach the lectern, please state your name and you will have three minutes. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. Go ahead. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Pointer, um, and I'm here this morning. I want to say welcome to Councilwoman Hertak. Glad to see you're here. Um, Tuesday, I sat in the back of this room watching many great citizens speak to why they would be the candidate for city council. As I watched, I wondered, would we have four votes for the most qualified candidate despite the mayor's endorsement of another? I was also curious about the retaliation of the vote. Welp, that didn't take but a day. Uh, for the record, I make no money, zip, nada, for coming here, for working for the citizens. At one time, I considered running for office, and, and in the last couple months, it's shown me there's not a chance of that ever happening because folks who sit up there constantly are in jeopardy of making a vote that makes them the next target, all for a whopping $53,000 a year. Nope, thanks anyway. I have met quite a few good people who are in development and lots of good land use attorneys who are honorable people who do things the way that the ethics rules state. Then there are those people who feel like the rules don't apply to them. They set their phones on auto delete text messages, only talk on phones so there's in any record of conversations to get that or they get out of cars and leave city folks alone with people who are bidding on projects and want to be the fourth vendor on a project where three vendors have already been accepted. I find it interesting that the mayor decided yesterday to bring out the talk about lobbyists. I've been trying to get city staff to look at the lobbyist registration for months. Lobbyists are registered, are responsible for registering. It isn't the job of any city officials or staff members to, re to register. So why speak about them at the same time you are attacking city council? Follow the flies. Thanks, Keela. I love the term. I can't think of anything more appropriate about a, a statement about the stink of what's going on down here. I can't wait until the Ethics Committee meets on April the 12th at 1 o'clock on the 5th floor, or again on the 21st at 3 p.m. I'm excited to see it. Thank you to Creative Loafing and the Times for reporting accurately yesterday. Thank you. Thank you to Channel 10 for uh, publicizing Councilman Carlson's response to the mayor's press conference, where she pulled up the term fake news. City Council is our legislative body. They have eight employees, including Mr. Shelby, and eight legislative aides. They have no publicist. The charter says that you are to have a budget analyst on staff, yet you do not have one. They are ignored by the city's public affairs department unless somebody accidentally gets in a picture with the mayor. Who do all these people work for? Have a good day. Thank you very much. All right, next speaker, please state your name. Hi, my name is Carol Ann Bennett. It would be impossible to count all the times I've, I've appeared before this city council and the previous city council. 
all the hours I've spent watching from home. The best city council members are the ones who are not beholden to anyone or afraid of anyone. The ones who have a strong moral compass and do what they think is right, even if it is not politically beneficial. The best ones have inquiring minds and ask questions of the citizens. They do their homework and they listen. John Dingfelder was that kind of councilman. Many of the members of this city council are that kind of councilman. That is why this city council is so much better than the last city council. I am glad you have had the courage to elect Lynn Hurtak. I am confident she will be independent, courageous, and will always listen to her constituents and do what she sincerely believes is the right thing to do. Many residents have reached out to me about all the current turmoil in our government. Needless to say, they are not happy. They want everyone to stop the nonsense and govern collaboratively and listen to the regular people, not just the deep pockets. I'm going to read to you some of the comments that citizens have sent to me. CA, tomorrow, why don't you say that you speak for all of us neighborhood advocates in support of city council, especially those who resist sketchy deals, and that we want city council to continue to question when people aren't above board and transparent in what they are proposing. Tampa residents are used to having honest government, and we want it to continue to be honest and above reproach. This has never happened before. In the history of the city, I've never seen it happen before. We need to pray for Bill, and Goods too, so they don't resign. That may be part of their strategy, to wear them down, kind of like the slap lawsuits, but with emotional pressure. This is certainly not what they signed up for. Boy, Bill C. was very angry in this interview, obviously sick of the lies. He's reached his limit. So glad he spoke out against this. They just need to do their jobs and let council do theirs. Checks and balances, people. That's what government is supposed to be all about. But they don't all want checks and balances. They want it all, my way or the highway. The rules apply to everyone else but not to them. It's enough to make you want to scream. I just want all this dirt to come out so that Dean Felder, Carlson, and Goods can be vindicated. Poor Bill. I don't want him getting sick over this. He looks very exhausted. <laughs> It must be very draining and terrifying knowing that they are watching your every move and are out to get you, to smear your good name, ruin your good reputation, and ruin your political career, and ruin you financially. That's a terrible way to have to live and do the public's business, and it's all so unnecessary. It's got to wear a person down, which is why I think he exploded today, not to mention the high hypocrisy it really is, the high hypocrisy it really is beyond the pale. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next speaker, please. Good morning. I'm Lorraine Perino, a third generation Tampa Hispanic uh, native. I've been watching what has been coming from Jane Castor's office, and I am appalled. Never in my life have I seen Tampa government in such turmoil as since she became mayor. This is what I've observed so far. A city councilman who had served the public honorably for 30 years, who was carrying out the wishes of his constituents, was accused of illegality when he had never before even had a scintilla of scandal attached to his name. And Gina Grimes, city attorney, was perfectly happy to collect her city salary while refusing to defend him. And so we Tampa residents lose an important voice on Tampa City Council. Then we learned that the city has commissioned a 60-page report and has paid two law firms $100,000 of my taxpayer money to accuse another city councilman, who was also representing his constituents, of creating a hostile workplace because he has a potty mouth. Well, a potty mouth does not disqualify Councilman Goods from serving in his elected office. Then we learned that the report is really 300 pages long, but that the city only released 60 pages to the public. What? Last week, we learned that the same attorney who sued Councilman Dingfelder is now representing Councilman Goods' accuser. Who's paying his legal fees? Because I'm sure he doesn't come cheap. And I fully expect that the city isn't using my taxpayer money to attempt to remove yet another city councilman from office, who also before now had never had a scintilla of scandal attached to his name. We learned that last November, Councilman Goode's accuser wrote to Trenum Law and to the city telling them to please stop the harassment case against Councilman Goods. But did they respect her wishes? No. Why? Because what the accuser wants isn't the point. The point is what Jane Castor wants. And what she wants is to pressure Councilman Goods to resign. And failing that, the city has referred this very weak case to the governor to see if he can remove the thorn in Castor's side. 
Do not let the government remove you from your elected office, Councilman Goods. You have done nothing that would disqualify you from office. Last month, Jane Castor had to have her BFF, Mary O'Connor, as chief of police and placed in the chief's position even before she was confirmed and even though she had retired six years before and had let her police certification lapse. And even though Jane Castor had zero Hispanics in upper level management, she deliberately passed over Major Ruben Delgado. Then she subjected the public to her dog and pony show where every retired policeman, firefighter, et cetera, showed up to endorse O'Connor. Who didn't show up to endorse O'Connor? Not one former police chief, sheriff, or state attorney. I haven't even mentioned the sketchiness of Rome Yard, Hannah Street, and Pure. I cannot imagine a more hostile workplace Tampa City Council than what Jane Castor herself has created for you. I liken it to Jurassic Park with the safety shields down, predators all around watching and waiting to destroy you in every way. This is not the way local government is supposed to work. Before Castor became mayor, city government always hummed along very smoothly and efficiently. We Tampa residents are fed up. Jane Castor accuses Tampa City Council members of the very things that she and, her, and the city attorney are guilty of. Dishonesty, lack of transparency, hostile workplace environment, work, violating Florida's sunshine laws. Tampa Thank City Council, much. the person who needs to resign is Jane Castor. Thank you very much. She is much. obviously not competent or worthy to run a big city like Tampa. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, next speaker. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Keila McCaskill, resident, lifelong resident of Tampa. Um, congratulations, Council Member Hertek. Um, and I want to thank the administration for creating this focus on transparency and accountability. You know, based on the recent chain of events, you know, from the, coming from the city council and from this administration, I believe that we failed from the community's perspective, we failed terribly at transparency and accountability. In fact, I, I recommend that, you know, we believe that we failed. I'm sure the city council, uh, some of the members would agree that we failed. I'd like to find out how city council or somebody on the legal staff, somebody can assist us in. Maybe we should invite the Department of Justice in Tampa and open it up so they can give us a report card as to how we score as it relates to transparency and accountability. Because if transparency and accountability was important to the administration, have the legal department release that gag order on Councilman Dingfelder so we can hear from him as well as the administration. If transparency and accountability is really important to the administration, why did the press get the information of, J of Castor's statement before Councilman Gould or his attorney? If transparency and accountability is important to the administration, why hasn't all the information about the closed investigation regarding Councilman Gould, as well as the documents in the investigation, been released? If transparency was important, why did they only release 60 pages as opposed to the 349, which has a lot of information there? If transparency and accountability was important, how can you say a new investigation was open after the new information came up, but the administration has yet still hasn't released all the information as it relates to the investigation? Why does the document from over 300 pages release clearly how not to share the information with Councilman Gould, but it was shared with other council members if transparency and accountability was important to the administration. If that was important, the claimant's health and well-being would have been preserved and protected as well. In her request to have a new position, she sat in that seat, if it was hostile, if it was so hostile, she sat there over a year and a half and wasn't moved until it was requested by Councilman Gould for her health and well-being. She was overwhelmed in the position and he wanted her to get another position. If transparency and accountability was so important, why, why all these questions from the public? I reviewed the 349 pages. I didn't, I reviewed the 60 pages and I believe it was intentional. Transparency and accountability is not the primary concern from the administration. And again, I'm not sure how this can happen, but I'm gonna find out. I would like the Department of Justice to come in and give us a report card. Just exactly how are we scoring as it relates to transparency and accountability. These councilmen have a role to, to play as it relates to our community, the constituents, we voted them in, and they can't do their job with, because they have to fight with the administration. That's unacceptable in this city. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next speaker. Hello, good morning. I am Sally S. C. Lee of the Volunteer Missionary Society Penny Fund. 
And I would just like to say all praises be to God. Thank you, Council Miranda, for your help and my getting my air conditioner fixed 90 days with that air. And so I still had to call your office back and your secretary, um, she helped me out. I had to call 45 people to contact to get this job done after three months. And finally, you know, I call around and talk to people. I've met some pretty nice people on the phone. And I would just like to say that we no longer have inspectors in Tampa that um, inspect apartment houses. And I would also let's so like to say we must not forget homelessness. We must decide to take a stand on freezing. This is my birthday month. And I would be glad if you all would decide, then God will let me sleep. Sleep is a luxury to me because when God wants me somewhere, he wakes you up 3 o'clock, a little pinch, and you're up and out to see the public. And also, I would like to say, we should ask God for forgiveness for our sins and malice, and we should move on forward, and we should decide on when you all going to sign the red freeze. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and keep the good works up. And please don't forget about homelessness and housing, please. That's why you're there, Sister Ham Tack. You got to stand up for us women who are living in the street, sleeping on the tree, under the border, everywhere. We need houses so our kids can think and feel like they're human. That's what I'm in it for about the, the kids who can't help themselves. Y'all, please make a decision about housing and rent freeze because it affect me too. I'm a senior and I can't afford my rent to go up. So I pray for y'all and y'all please do the right thing and come up with the transparency. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, next speaker, please. Jay Passmore, uh, thank you for having me, City Council. Um, there's a lot of things I want to say, but obviously I have to make it condensed. Um, I've been calling for uh, the racist mayor to resign since 2020, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I really think, and first of all, congratulations, uh, Councilwoman Hertek, but I do think the process to pick an applicant, um, as we talk about transparency, was not transparent. The morning of city council was deciding whether or not if they would ask applicants questions. That should have been something planned out in advance. Uh, numerous people from the community spoke and said we wanted a progressive black woman. Where was, when we talk about the needs of the people who are coming to speak, where was the consideration for any of that? And that's nothing to say anything about Councilwoman Hertek, but when you are not listening to the people when considering your decisions, um, you're no better than the mayor when you're doing that. Um, when we talk about transparency, um, I feel like if y'all not gonna listen to the public, then the public needs to hold y'all accountable. Um, when we talk about investigations, uh, Bill Carson's former aide uh, has said he was a victim of uh, emotional and verbal abuse. Uh, where's the investigation to be opened up on that? Um, I think it's time to hold each other accountable as much as other council members can go in the news and call for others to resign. I think everyone needs to be held accountable and ask yourselves, are you what's best for the public if you cannot listen to the public and listen to the needs of the people? And I don't see that happening. I know a lot of you uh, got triggered when I said y'all were white men, um, but um, I know I'm not here to give you a class on ethnicity, race, and nationality, but I just want to say for the record, you can be white and Hispanic, in case you were confused. But my overall thing is, um, not only did you completely disregard uh, the will of the people, you didn't even really actually seem to care about the applicants who came up and spoke. Um, I did see uh, Council Member Vieira, uh, and I forget the gentleman's name, but he did say, hey, my aide is gonna get in contact with you and so forth, but overall speaking, it looks to the public that y'all already had y'all minds made about who y'all wanted. And it looks like it was the woman who was endorsed by our mayor. So when we talk about transparency and we talk about city council um, being at odds with the administration, uh, 
these actions further um, envelop our city government in Tormo. Um, I've been to cities that have 50 person city councils and 15 person city councils. This is a small c council in comparison, but it looks like y'all just show up and do what you want and not listen to the people or even care about the will of the people. And I hope that my words inspire each one of you, whether you like me or not, to really be reflective and change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, go ahead. Morning, Mint is not. It's a stupid process and it's a stupid city council. The fact of the matter is to choose someone, and no disrespect to the person that was chosen, to choose someone, all you had to do was see if the person who had the second amount of votes when they ran, when the people chose someone, see if they wanted the job. And that person was right here and she didn't get the job. So it's a stupid process. Absolutely, positively, it's a stupid process. That's what it is. And you got a stupid mayor that got out right out there somewhere and talk about transparency. What transparency? After they do what they want to do, then they claim transparency? After her nephew got some job over some city contract? Where was the transparency in that? Where's the transparency in a project, a $100 million project, that it was no process? No African contractors, no minority contractors, $100, $100 million to start, and calling it East Tampa, and it's not even East Tampa. Where's the transparency in that? Transparency is a little trick. They put dirt out on you, and then they come out, they hide their hand, put dirt out on the other person like they did Dingfelder, and come out and claim transparency. Dingfelder was solved for resigning, because he's a good person. He was solved for resigning, and we want Orlando Goulds to hang in there, and other people to hang in there. This, this city council have no respect from that mayor's office, and it's been that way from the last mayor's office. And if they're wrestling the mayor for power, then this is what's going to happen. They have a situation going right now at Jesuit High School, they talk about transparency, where an African kid lands in the hospital, and the transparency is they're doing the same thing they did with Orlando Goose. The Tampa Police Department has released part of the video, not the whole video, and said, oh, the African kid started the, started the, the confusion. No, release the whole video so we can see what happened. There's no transparency going on. And that's something I've been talking about for over three decades, coming right before the city council. And when you try to talk about transparency, it's so bad. When you try to talk about transparency, that man right there, they don't like you to call names. That man right there came in the Hillsborough County Clerk of the Circuit Court and watched me get jail time for sitting right there and standing up to speak at this podium and they didn't like what I was saying. Where's transparency in that? I don't like to personalize anything. Millions, tens of millions of dollars in code enforcement in this city against me, Tony Daniel, for what? For what? What do I do? Where's the transparency in that? No, there's no transparency. What this city council need to do I know it's a tough day to be a first day on the job and get it this way. <laughs> <laughs> what this city council need to do is stand up and have a balance in government. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to talk about communism and Putin, but we got our Putin right here. Our Putin is called Castor. Thank you very much, sir. And she's right here. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, go ahead. Once again, man, Joe Robinson, West Tampa. Y'all got me down here missing the masters, man, okay? I got to want to get the Tiger Woods. Uh, the reason I came down because I thought that the community benefit agreement would be on the agenda today, but I hear that the agenda was full. It's been moved to the 21st, you know, but we'll, I'll be back on the 21st. But I was down here to talk about the CBA. However, I'm down here looking at, congratulations, first of all, Ms. Lynn Hurtak. You know, I have a slight conversation with you. Uh, but uh, you're getting baptized by fire, not water, this morning. Uh, welcome to the club. 
Okay, welcome to the club. It's a big club. Uh, it's called Transparency versus the Invisible Man. See, so you know, some things are transparent, some things are invisible in this area. Uh, and I say this, I met, uh, switching subject, I met Mrs. Travis that took over Carol Post's job. She's going to do good. I've been knowing her, I didn't realize I've been knowing her since uh, 2008 that I had met her back then. Rob Rosner uh, has shared a community benefit agreement since I'm the uh, West Tampa CRA CAC committee person that is following the Rome Yard Community Benefit Agreement for West Tampa. Uh, I have the document. I've read it. Uh, we're going to try to run it by our committee before uh, you bring it back on the 21st. We're going to have to have an emergency meeting or something. Uh, but it just come out. It's final. And also, on Hannah, they're having today at 3 o'clock. Anybody want to try to get some work, get over there at 3 o'clock at Reagan Park, see what's going on. Because uh, I hear a lot going on, but I, a lot of it is going to keep moving on. Things are going to keep moving. I don't care what happens. And, and I'm going to say this. There's a lot of distractions going on on both sides of the grass, the fence, up, down, round, and the town. Now, this lady mentioned the Justice Department. That's an interesting conversation. However, there's nothing reached Justice Department level yet, but it's getting real. Close. So I'm here to say that, uh, and I'm telling you, man, y'all caused me to miss Tiger Woods, okay, coming back from a hurt leg. But I'm going to say with this last 30 seconds, Mr. Carson, if you need a bodyguard, let me know. Uh, you might need one one day uh, at the rate we going around here. So I'm going to tell you guys, let's keep doing what you're doing. Y'all keep vetting it out. Y'all keep communicating. But let's keep it civilized. Let's keep it legal. And let's do a job that you was elected and appointed to do for the public. So y'all can do what you want to do. Just remember, you work for the public. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to go watch Tiger Woods, man. Thank you very much. Y'all have a nice day. See you, Tiger. Yes, sir. that's it. All right. Uh, we now will go to, if there's no one else in the public that's here to speak for public comment, we'll go to the registered speakers that are online. Uh, number one, I believe, is Mr. Michael Randolph. Good morning, Chair. Michael, if you're on the line, please unmute yourself and you have three minutes to speak. Mr. Randolph? Hello? Yes, uh, my name is Michael Randolph. I'm with the West Tampa uh, CDC. To the latest person that's just got on board, uh, congratulations, but you're coming at a time when the country is going back. Everything that could possibly go wrong is going wrong in this country. And it's nothing like a female to come and straighten it out. So, there is a crisis in West Tampa in which long-term residents are being displaced by being called gentrification. It's supported by a recent finding by the Hillsborough County Commission that shows that West Tampa and East Tampa, specifically black community, have been realigned, and that's why we have the crisis in West Tampa. I mentioned that I'm with the West Tampa CDC. Let's talk about what the CDC is related to the federal government. They say it's a private, nonprofit corporation governed by a board of directors consisting of residents of the community, business, and civic leaders, which has a principal purpose of planning, developing, and implementing community development activities. They back that plan for what's called a community economic development grant in which CDCs can go to to get infrastructure changes. So let's talk about the West Tampa CDC and our, our model. We are a community-based model. The CDC is ran by residents that live in the community. Dr. Margaret Fisher is the, is the uh, chairperson and Joe Robinson is the right chairperson. Our model uses what's known as the Community Comprehensive Initiative that comprises economic, physical, and social development all together. Social development is all about people. Economic development is all about money. And physical is all about infrastructure, specifically affordable housing. Our most recent project, and you can hear about it, is the Rome Yard Project. The Rome Yard Project is going to change the narrative when it comes to residents in West Tampa.
the way Stanford CDC role is to move forward with what's known as the job um, home base slash e-commerce uh, job program. We plan to, in the next five years, create 120 new part-time and full-time residents, I mean full-time businesses that are going to be controlled by the residents. Out of that, it's going to be 150 new jobs created because of these businesses. Nine to ten million dollar economic impact. So, what's the what's the goal? Reduce gentrification, increase public safety, increase job creation, and increase generational wealth in the community. Our target population: the low income, at this youth, those with criminal records, and those on fixed income, specifically senior citizens. So, thank you for giving me an opportunity. This is a hard time. In our country, we have to do better. And again, to the newest member of the city council, we know females always straighten it out, straighten it out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Next on the list I have is uh, Stephanie Pointer, but she was here. We also had Carol Ann Bennett. She was here. Uh, so the next speaker I have is Louis Galdieri to speak on item number three, I believe. Is there a Louis Galdieri on the line? Galdieri, if you're on the line, please unmute yourself, and you have three minutes to speak. Mr. Galdieri, if you're on the line, go ahead. I am. I, I wanted to make sure that I was unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Great. Thank you for the opportunity to address City Council this morning. I'm, I'm Lou Galdieri. I'm the president of the Towers of Channel Side Homeowners Association. And um, first of all, I want to thank you for being um, a great partner. And a very, we have been a very active partner with city staff and city council for the past two years. We appreciate the discussion today on item three recognizes that partnership and the fact that the channel district has evolved to become mostly residential. We also appreciate Councilman Vieira meeting with our residents to hear and homeowners to hear firsthand the challenges that we're experiencing in our community. The proposed amendment, I'm not gonna belabor the discussion because you've you've heard all of the challenges and you, you've discussed this for two years. The proposed amendment prohibits unreasonably excessive noise as well as vibration within a fully enclosed structure. The clear intent is to prohibit the effects of the bath, the bath experienced by the tower's residents, the vibration from the current establishment. Uh, these provisions of sections 12 -1, section 12-154 do not currently apply to the channel district because we're not governed by section 14-154. It's my understanding you're going to discuss that today. Bring the channel district within the provisions of section 14-154 will represent great progress. We ask that you vote in favor of that ordinance, and I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much, sir. Next, we have Jean Next Strohmeyer. Speakers. Next speaker is going to be Jean Strohmeyer. Okay. Jean, if you're on the line, please unmute yourself. You have three minutes to speak. Can you all hear me? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Good morning, City Council, and congratulations, Ms. Hertog, for your um, for your 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 new position um just to, for um somebody else that spoke that said she was endorsed by the mayor that is incorrect that's the wrong one she was not endorsed by the mayor um but we did feel that she had a good neighborhood background so i feel that was the best candidate for the job because their your job as the city council is to protect your neighborhoods and to listen to your constituents who voted you in I don't think um, representatives that have not been voted in, people in the city that have not been voted in should be running our city, including the Bloomberg Foundation and whatnot. So that was a big mistake and, and the, the people, hopefully that we can reverse that somehow. Look into that. Anyway, just um, I, for the record again, and I'm gonna let y'all know that I do pray for every one of you every single day, eight o'clock PM, anybody wants to join in on, in prayer, just set your alarm, eight o'clock to pray for our city to pray for our county and to pray for our uh, state as well as our country, because both are all are going down a hell in a handbasket the way I see it, unless we keep praying. So um, back to the agenda, I see number one is this um, sexual assault awareness that um, I looked at, I was looking into that and that's all well and good, but it came right after that meeting um, to lynch Mr. Um, Mr. Goods Mr. Goods, and it felt like that just, if you look back at the record, it came like within two weeks of that quote meeting of by the city leaders, just so you know, and that was also, you see who started that. 
Um, so I think, uh, let's see, on the agenda, um, you have a number 19 is talking about change the order of contracts. If you can change the order of contract, you could have done that with Bloomberg and the Hannah, Con and Hannah um, project. Y'all look into that if you can't. Um, number, let's see, 25, elect uh, two, there's $2 million being proposed for things. And just please make sure you, you handle our money um, as if it was your own, not as if it was an unlimited bank account. That's the, what we all, we all live within our means. So I suggest that you guys do the same if you, um, you know, look into what's coming on the agenda and look at it smartly. Um, it's the same thing with growth. We want our, our city to grow. We don't mind development and growth, but we want smart growth. And that goes to the developers in the audience there today. And, you know, talking about transparency, I listen to a lot of the statements and the, the, the executive branch needs to be a little more transparent as well. So we need to make that that uh, full circle that everybody kind of knows what's going on. And um, again, the mayor's office, there's a lot of things going on there that people are telling me and that I've seen that that, that just don't look good. Um, so we need to address that. And we really need to, um, to change the code so that the city council has a little more um, power when it comes to struggles against the mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, okay. Have a good day. You too. All right, the uh, two other registered speakers I have are Tyler Hudson and Jamie Meyer, but they are available if there are questions on four and five, so I'll wait there. But uh, the gentleman in the second row, uh, I know you wanted to speak. We apologize. We uh... Go ahead, sir. You have three minutes. Yes, sir. Please state your name. with you. Uh, specifically, I'm addressing the noise ordinance today. Uh, I live in uh, Tower 1. I live in the 05 tier, which is specifically Unit 2205. The 04 and 05 tiers are directly above the Park and Rec gaming bar that is creating the noise that we are currently tolerating. I was the first person to move into Tower One in September of 2007, when it was solely a high-rise residential community with no retail. So I was there when Asia was established as a nightclub, and I was there when the gaming bar came into existence, Park and Rec, in December of 2019. You might recall that on March 17th, I spoke to the consul. What did I talk about? I talked about the specific type of noise that was penetrating our bedrooms between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. You graciously listened and agreed that a noise ordinance separating the channel district from Ebor should be considered by the consul. Today I'm here to thank you uh, for undertaking this new noise ordinance, which I strongly support, as do all of the tower members, residents, if you will, that I have spoken with. I also want to thank the city administrators, specifically Nicole and Susan, for their efforts to listen to those of us in the towers and to produce a first reading draft ordinance at the Council's direction, which you are considering today and will hopefully pass. We in the towers need your continued understanding and support to stop or significantly curtail this unacceptable noise in our bedrooms in a residential community. I look forward to participating in the future workshops, which I understand are uh, scheduled, and uh, work towards the goal of significantly reducing and at certain times eliminating the noise. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. All right. 
That, yes, sir. Councilman Villa. If I may, I, I want to clarify something. I, I never respond to public comment, but I want to read from item number one, which states as follows, Tiffany Davis to appear and provide five minute presentation on Sexual Assault Awareness Month, original motion initiated by Vera Citra on September 9th, 2021, about probably eight months ago, if my math is correct. So just for the record, yes. uh, that's, that's, that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That concludes public comment. Any request by the public for reconsideration of legislative matters? Hearing none, we'll go on to item number three. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Morning, Mr. Chair, Council, um, Susan Johnson, Velez Legal Department. Item number three is um, an amendment to the noise ordinance that Council requested at your last meeting um, that would remove the channel district from section 14-153, the list of districts in that section where noise is measured on a decibel level standard. Um, the effect of this ordinance would be to now place the channel district or have the channel district governed by the um, plainly audible standard for noise. And um, the effective date would be immediately upon adoption. If council will recall the last noise ordinance um, amendment that we did that you recently appealed, repealed had a six month delay, but this would take effect immediately upon adoption after second reading. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from council members? Councilman Vieira, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And, and thank you for, again, for all your hard work on this. I, I appreciate that. Um, it, so this is just for the channel district? That's correct. Okay, because it says here just at Ybor City District, or am I? Well, the Ybor District, the Arena District, and the Channel District are currently the three districts where okay. noise is measured on a decibel level standard. So what the districts that would remain would be the Ybor Historic okay, District and, okay. and Arena. Great. Well, just wanted to publicly say thank you very much. Um, you know, uh, potentially lost in all the confusion and shuffle on this issue was the uh, the the needs of of, uh, of our friends in channel side for immediate relief and I think this this does it and we can deal with all the other very legitimate concerns on this from businesses and different groups but again like I said before somewhere in between Ebor City and Tampa Palms is channel side right and, and I don't think it's either one so I think this uh, will begin to address that thank you so much you. we appreciate you I, I did just have yes, one one item of clarification um, I know it was mentioned in public comment that workshops have been scheduled. Um, I am working with staff um, to uh, create a public engagement plan as council had requested and so we will be bringing that back to you on uh, at your next meeting on April 21st. So those those are to be scheduled but have not yet been scheduled. Thank you very much. Councilman Miranda, anything sir? No, I just want to thank the people of Genocide for being who they are and standing up for their rights. All right. Anybody else? Councilman Carlson? Yeah, I um, thank you for doing this and thanks to the folks from Channel District for uh, bearing with us the last couple of years that they've been pushing for this. Um, the other thing that we we know from other neighborhoods that we need this in other parts of the city. We need to we need to strengthen, not not this exact thing, but we need to strengthen the noise uh, ordinances. And I'm aware of a um, uh, a private um, a community group that's coming up to study um, the, the the newer um, uh, methods of, of regulating noise that would be friendly to business in the in the neighborhoods and and uh, hopefully shield us from litigation. So as that process goes forward, I know Nicole's been having some conversations with them. As that process goes forward, look forward to hearing their input. And uh, my message is to everybody else who's suffering from noise issues. There are multiple efforts to try to come up with new ideas to address it. So thank you. Anybody else? All right, Council Member Miranda, would you like to read item number three? I certainly will, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Item number three, file number 2022-8, or is being presented for first reading consideration. Ordinance in the city of Tampa, Florida, relating to the regulation of noise making revision to the city of Tampa Code of Ordinances, chapter 14, article three noise, amending section 14-153, unreasonably excessive noise from properties prohibited, Ybor City District, Channel District, and the arena area, repeating all ordinance or parts of ordinances, conflict, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Second. We have a second from Councilman Citro. Mr. Shelby, would you like a roll call? Or since we're all here. Okay, all in favor, and a kibite saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 5th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Next is item number four. I know we have uh, Tyler Hudson on standby virtually. If there are any questions, this is to correct a Scrivener's error. Um, 
as it reads here by substituting a new exhibit A. Um, do we have anybody? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Susan Johnson, Velez Legal Department. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, Council, this is um, a correction to uh, Exhibit A from Ordinance Number 2022-21, which Council uh, passed on February 17th. Um, the text amendment, this was a text amendment to the comprehensive plan, and the amendment language was actually appropriately paraphrased in the ordinance itself, but then the incorrect exhibit was attached to the ordinance after adoption. So this would just merely substitute out the correct um, language of the text amendment. All right, any questions? Yes, Councilman Carlson, go ahead. Yeah, please. just a comment real fast. In my individual briefing, I asked that staff, um, and I think they've agreed to include the original SIRE filings on these issues when we're doing amendments, because it's hard to go back and find what it what it was about if it's just if, if all is there is the is the is the summary and then the the change it it would be helpful to be able to see all the backup from the original items so that we could look at it again so I think they're going to do that but I just want to let you all know I can ask that. all right uh, we have Mr. Uh, Tyler mm -hmm. Hudson online if there are any questions are there any questions for the gentleman no all right thank you very much Councilman uh, Vieira would you like to read item number four sure thank you sir Move an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration ordinance amending ordinance number 2022-21 passed and ordained by City Council of the City of Tampa on February 17, 2022, correcting a Scrivener's error by substituting a new Exhibit A for the previously approved Exhibit A to accurately reflect the text amendment language so it is consistent with the text amendment language and ordinance number 2022-21, providing it for severability, Second. providing an effective date. We have a motion from Councilman Vieira, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion right. carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 5th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Next is item number five. We have Jamie Meyer on standby. If there are any questions, if not, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Susan Johnson Velez, uh, Legal Department. This again is a, an ordinance presented to correct a scrivener's error um, to by substituting uh, a new exhibit A for ordinance number 2022-38, which council passed on February 17th. Um, this is just a, a correction to the legal description. Again, the incorrect legal description was attached to the ordinance that was adopted. Any questions? All right. Remember, we have someone on standby. If there are any questions, if not, Councilman Citra, would you like to read on number five? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Farm number AB221-28, an ordinance presents first reading consideration. An ordinance amending ordinance number 2022-38 passed and ordained by the City Council of the City of Tampa on February 17, 2022, correcting a Scrivener's error by substituting a new Exhibit A for the previous approved Exhibit A to reflect and uh, accurate the legal description of the subject property consistent with the legal description of the site plan and the ordinance of 2022-38, approving for severability, approving an effective date. Second. We have a motion for Councilman Citra, second Councilman Miranda, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, any motion. opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 5th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And again, Councilman Cedro, you are the Public Safety Committee Chair. Would you like to move items six through nine? Again, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I move items number six through nine. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Cedro, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Council Member Goods, Parks, you, Rec, Chair. and Cultural Committee. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move items number 10 through 16. We have a motion from Council Member Goods, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next up, Public Works Committee, Council Member Carlson. Yes, I'd like to move uh, 17 through 26, please. Do we have a second. second? Second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? All right, Finance Committee is item number 27, Council Member Miranda. Item number 27 is an appointment by the Mayor of Thomas A. Hammer uh, to the Barrio Latino Commission for a three year term. Do we have a second? Second from Councilman Citra. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Building zoning and preservation items 28 through 39. Councilmember Carlson, that is you, sir. Yes, I'd like to move um, 28 through 39, please. All second. Right. We have a second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And also just a comment on number 32. Thank you to the administration and grants department for continuing to work on affordable housing. Very good. Yes, sir. That's two million dollars. All right, Councilmember Vieira. Items 40 through 46. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, um, I need to pull. Um, 
43 and 44 to vote separately. Um, I need to recuse myself because my firm has a, a, um, a, a client that is related to each of these issues, and I'll be filing the appropriate form. So could we vote on the other ones? All right. Uh, Councilman Vieira, if you yes, could sir. move 40 through 42 and 45 and 46. Move 40 through 42, 44 through 46. Do we have a second? Second sorry. Councilman sorry. Miranda? What, what, what? What? what was the numbers again? 40, 40 through 42. 42. 44 through 46. 45, no, 45 through 46. 45. I apologize. Yep. 45 through 46. Thank you, Marty. Second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Councilman and Carlson, four. you are recusing yourself and we'll file the form uh, yep. later on. And so items 43 and 44. Yes, sir. So moved. Second. Motion from Councilman Vieira. Second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried with Carlson abstaining. Okay. Uh, we have uh, not made a motion to open the public so hearing. So uh, let's, uh, we have 48 all the way through, because it is 1030. We can open all the way through. I'm coming, I'm coming. All the way through. Uh, all the way through 62. All right, so Councilman Miranda has made a motion to open all the public hearings from 48 through 62. Do we have a second? Aye, second, second. From, oh, Aye, no. second from Council Member Hertak. All in favor? Aye. All right, we are at number 48. Good morning. City Council, this is Elaine Lund, Historic Preservation Staff. If I may have permission to share my screen, please. Are you able to see the screen? No. Not yet. I'm gonna send you a picture of a house. I think you can be incorporated in that banding on the front. You, you, you. Their concerns was all right we can see your screen call. but if you're not speaking please mute yourself we're getting some feedback if you're not speaking please mute yourself please please mute um, yourself all right so good morning this is the um presentation for the mcfarland building local historic landmark designation this property is located at 1902 north howard avenue The owner, McFarland Building LLC, submitted an application for the local historic landmark designation consideration on June 15th, and applications are reviewed by the Historic Preservation Commission. And eligible properties must, must meet the criteria of Section 27-257 of the City of Tampa Code of Ordinances. Local historic, nation, historic designation preserves, promotes, and protects individual landmarks, landmark sites, historic districts throughout the city of Tampa. On the left here, you see the 1915 Sanborn map showing the brick block. Um, it's outlined in red there at the corner of Howard Avenue and Chestnut Street. And on the right, the present day aerial map um, showing the same property, you'll note that today the two residential structures that were shown on the 1915 map are no longer standing. West Tampa was established by Hugh McFarland in the late 1880s. Um, Hugh McFarland managed to gather a large group of investment um, investors and wooed cigar manufacturers to the city by constructing cigar factories and residential housing for the workers. The particular property in question here today, the McFarland building, is a two-story brick commercial vernacular building with the Renaissance Revival style details that were particularly found on several of the um, historic cigar factories that were built in West Tampa. The West Tampa Historic District was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1983 with a period of significance, um, meaning the date that the significant historic structures were found throughout the district from 1893 to 1933. So the McFarland building was built within this period of significance for the West Tampa Historic District. The city of Tampa remained an independent um, incorporated city until 1925 when it was annexed into the city of Tampa. 
the West Tampa Multiple Properties listing is a local um, historic designation that was adopted by the city of Tampa in 2006. Currently, it includes one commercial building and two residential structures on LaSalle Street. As stated, the application was made on June 15th of 2021, and the HPC reviewed the property and recommended for local historic landmark designation as part of the West Tampa multiple properties listing on September 9th of 2021. The Planning Commission reviewed the application and found it consistent on October 26th of that year. Notice was provided to the property owner, to nearby property owners, and registered organizations. The Historic Preservation Commission found that the application did meet the criteria of Section 27257 and that it was um, constructed in 1905. It is significant in the area of commerce, community planning and development, and architecture. In summary, the staff recommends that Tampa City Council approve the designation of the McFarland Building as a local historic landmark and part of the West Tampa Multiple Properties listing based on it meeting the criteria in Section 27257. I would like to thank the owner who was um, present today for his support of this designation and for his investment in historic West Tampa. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, as it was mentioned, because I love Tampa history so much, I got to throw in a couple of tidbits. Hugh McFarland is known as the father of West Tampa and the namesake here of this building. He was also city attorney back around 1890, I believe. He was credited with extending the streetcar into West Tampa. McFarland Park, which he donated to the people, was originally a golf course, and now it's a beautiful park. So there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of history here be behind that name, and uh, and even Bob Enriquez, our property appraiser, I believe his great grandfather was the last or one of the mayors of West Tampa because it was unlike Ybor City. Ybor City was annexed by the city. The city of West Tampa until 1925 was its own uh, established municipality with its own mayor and government. So that's your history lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions from council members? I, I, had to, I, I had to do did it. Did we pass the history lesson? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I want to know. Thank you very much. Anybody? No? Do we have an applicant here? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Good morning. My name is Hamilton Jones. The owner of the property. Uh, we've done a lot of historic preservation work in the city in the past, and we intend to restore this building and rehabilitate it to the Secretary of Interior Standards. Also here today is Stephanie Farrell, our historic preservation consultant. So we're here for any questions. Any questions of the applicant or the consultant? Do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number 48? Do we have anybody registered? I, I have the list here, but there is no one registered. Yeah, no one, there's no one registered to speak on item 48. Second. Right. We have a motion closed from Councilman Goose and Councilman Miranda. Stephanie Farrell, good to see you. Thank you for all your historic preservation work. I've Always admired you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the person we left off with, Council Member uh, Hertak, would you mind reading item number 48? No. Of course. Uh, file number E2022 8, CH27, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, amending the West Tampa multi -property, Multiple Properties Group to include the McFarland Building, located at 1902 North Howard Avenue, Tampa, Florida, as more particularly described in Section 3 hereof as a local landmark, providing for repeal of all ordinances in conflict, providing for several, several ability, and providing an effective okay. date. All right, we have a motion from Council Member Hertak, same with Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the building next door is the original Alessi Bakery. Right. Uh, you know, a little something extra. Yes, ma'am. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 5th, 2022, at 9.30 a.m. And my mother would wait in line with my grandparents on Sunday to get fresh bread from Alessi Bakery. Congratulations, Councilwoman Hertak, <laughs> for your first uh, motion. All right, next up. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Item number 49. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Um, is my screen shared for item 49? Yes, we can see it. Go ahead. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, this item here 
in wait, front of you this wait, morning to just, consideration. Just a moment, just a moment. Yes, For number 48, correction, the motion carried with Carlson and Vieira being absent of oath. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 5th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Go ahead, ma'am, sorry. Thank you, sir. Um, Agenda item number 49 is 1208 North Howard Avenue. Additionally, a application before you for consideration for local historic landmark designation and in addition to the Tampa multiple property, the West Tampa multiple properties listing. The owner, um, AIA Tampa Bay, submitted an application for local historic landmark consideration on June 22nd, 2021. Um, properties are considered by the Historic Preservation Commission, at, again, at a public hearing to determine whether they meet the designation criteria of Section 27257 of the City's Code. Local historic designation preserves historic landmarks and allows for the review of alterations to the designated properties um, and provides economic benefits to the city at large. This building was constructed circa 1906 in the city of West Tampa. On your left is a 1915 map showing the brick structure on the west side of Howard Avenue between Nassau and Arch Streets. Um, please note that this is an entire brick block, meaning the um, entire um, area between Arch Street and the alley there is brick, but only the south half of the, um, the brick block is considered to be the structure that's under your review here today. Uh, the image on the right is the modern day aerial photograph with the subject's uh, site outlined in red. The 1906 building at 1208 North Howard Avenue was um, constructed just across the alley from a prominent cigar factory. Initially, it was the SI Davis Company um, here. Now it is known as the Baldwin Brothers Cigar Factory. It was constructed as a commercial rental property with a restaurant in it. And the restaurant initially served the workers at the cigar factory. Um, here you see some images of some of the historic interior materials, such as the pressed tin ceiling and a cold storage door, which was um, sort of um, before re refrigerators were widely in use. So the West Tampa Historic District, again, was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1983 with a period of significance of 1893 to 1933. Therefore, this building um, was built during the period of significance of the West Tampa Historic District and is proposed to you today as part of the West Tampa Multiple Properties listing as designated by the City of Tampa. The application date was June 22nd, 2021, and the HPC reviewed it and recommended it for local landmark designation as part of this multiple properties listing on September 9th, 2021. On December 1st, 2021, the Planning Commission found the application to be consistent. Um, notice was provided to the owner, nearby property owners, and registered organizations. The City of Tampa Code of Ordinances, Section 27257, um, notes that the building must be constructed or achieved during a period of historic significance and this building was in um, 1906 and it states that the um, designated landmarks must be meet certain criteria um, this building is in the areas of commerce and the areas of architecture as a typical example of a west tampa historic structure from this early era Staff recommends that City Council approve the designation of 1208 North Howard Avenue as a local historic landmark and as part of the West Tampa Multiple Properties listing based on it meeting the criteria in Section 27257. Staff would like to thank the property owner, AIA Tampa Bay, for its large support of historic preservation in the city and for their presence here this morning. I believe we do have um, representatives from the AIA Tampa Bay here uh, this morning in the audience. I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have a history lesson on this building. <laughs> any questions from council members? Nope. Yes, sir, Mr. Moore. Good morning, council members. Welcome, Councilwoman Hertek. It's nice to see you. I'm Jonathan Moore, the current vice president of AIA Tampa Bay. On behalf of our current president, Gerald McCants, 
Uh, our executive director, Don Magis, who is here with me today, and our 750 local members were thrilled to be able to serve as an example in historically designating uh, our new home. Uh, we're very excited to become a part of West Tampa and open this renovated, renovated building to the community as the Center for Architecture and Design. This designation will ensure that this building will be a permanent asset to West Tampa and not become a parking lot as a previous uh, uh, owner uh, was looking to do. And we will be sure to invite everyone to our grand opening later this year and we thank you for your support. Any questions for the gentleman? Nope. Do we have anybody for public comment on item number 49 in the audience? I don't have anybody um, registered to speak, but anybody here to speak? We have motion closed from Second. Councilman Goods. Second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Councilmember Goods, would you like to read item number 49? Take a stab at it, sir. Thank you, sir. File number E2022-8CH27. Ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, amending the West Tampa Multiple Properties Group to include property listed located at 1208 North Howard Avenue, Tampa, Florida, as most likely described in Section 3 hereof as a local landmark providing for appeal of all ordinances in conflict providing for celebrability, dividing effective dates. Okay. We have motion from Councilman Good, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 5th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Mr. All Chair. Right. Yes, sir. Since you didn't tell a history story, I'll tell one real fast. The uh, Thanks to AIA for starting historic preservation in the United States. I've been to their headquarters in Washington, D.C., and uh, taking a tour uh, with Mickey Jacob, who was the international president of AIA, and from here, um, not everybody knows. Remember the story of Dolly Madison pulling the George Washington painting out of the White House when it was burned? The, the one British, that's, that's well, faded at the bottom? The, Brit the British invaded yeah. and burned down the White House, and so where did the president and his wife go? They went to a building two blocks away, and that building was in the late 1800s preserved by the AIA, and it was the start of the uh, historic preservation movement in the United States. And, they, and their headquarters is adjacent to it and connected to it. You can visit there today, and I'm sure Guido will. Thank you. Yes, if, if you go to my office, I have old life magazines, mainly from the 60s because it was the urban renewal period, and it talks about the loss of so many wonderful buildings before historic preservation was a commercially used term as we use it today. And I wish I had a time machine to preserve a lot of these old buildings, but we do what we can today. So thank you very much. Did we take a, a vote on that? All right, so we're good. Did you announce the second reading? Okay. All right, thank you very much. We go to our 930 public hearings. We've already opened everything. These are non-quasi-judicial. Uh, item number 50. This is the second public hearing, and we would have to just move the resolution afterwards, correct? That is correct, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Uh, Susan Johnson, Velez Legal Department. Um, yes, this is a First Amendment to um, development agreement for the Midtown development, um, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, the, this First Amendment is being requested because the, the plat that dedicated um, public drainage easement did not allow encroachments into that easement, and the developer would like to make um, a couple of minor encroachments into the public drainage easement, and so um, this amendment would allow that encroachment. Um, stormwater staff has been consulted, and we work with them in developing this agreement, and they are um, in favor of the limited encroachment that this uh, would approve. Happy to answer any questions. I know the developer's attorney, Mr. Bentley, is also here if you have any questions. For any them. questions at this time? No? All right. Wait. Second. Oh, it's a public hearing. Sorry. Wait, wait, we have to get public comment first. Mr. Bentley, do you have anything? Uh, no, thank you. I was thinking about you this morning. I was listening to A Hard Day's Night on the way over, and I know you are the Beatles guy, so. You seem like you know a lot about trivia. What, 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 what is that chord on a guitar? Which one? For A Hard Day's Night? The, the opening chord. I don't know, but I know it's complicated. If you go to YouTube, I, there is, uh, I think a professor okay. did an analysis, and he replicated. So the answer is you don't know. I don't know, but I know it's, right. it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> No, I don't have any comments. All right. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Do we Take have anybody care. in the public that wishes to speak on item number 50? We do not have anybody registered. Uh, do we move the resolution before we close or after? Okay. Motion to close? I'll take the motion. Oh, motion to close from Councilmember Hertak, second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. And who would like to move the resolution? Go ahead. Would you like to move the resolution? Oh, sure. Um, file number, or am I Let's going down there? 
Okay. Yeah, just move the resolution. Thank you. Appreciate it. Resolution approved a First Amendment to the development agreement between the City of Tampa and Tampa Bay One LLC, authorizing the execution thereof by the mayor and the City of Tampa, providing an effective date. Second. Do we have a second? Second from Councilman C. Troll in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried with Goods being absent at vote. All righty. Item number 51, um, non quasi judicial. So, who do we have here for this second reading? Yes, ma'am. Kamaria Pettis Malka from the City Attorney's Office. Um, this is a this is the second reading for um, Chapter Five amendments um, for consideration based upon the 2021 legislative session um, update. And um, the, I believe staff originally appeared. Um, the building official J.C. Hutchison, along with Abby Feely, originally appeared for the first reading. All right. Do we have any questions at this time? Hearing none. Um, we do have uh, Gene Strohmeyer registered for public comment. Gene Strohmeyer, if you're on the line, unmute yourself if you'd like to go ahead and speak. Is Gene logged in? Gene, if you're on the line, please unmute yourself and you have three minutes to speak. She's currently self muted. Gene, if you can hear me, unmute yourself. Jean Strohmeyer. And that's the only registered public comment that we have. One last call for Jean. Jean? Hello, I'm sorry. Go ahead, you have I'm, three I'm, minutes. Please state your name. Okay, wait, I'm, I'm working. What issue were we on? Oops. We're item, on item sorry. number 51. You're also registered for 53. Uh, this is for 51. Okay. Hi, my name is Jean Strohmeyer. Um, item 51 about amending the code. I think we need to probably amend the code. I forgot what this was about, but that's okay. Um, I have an actual job. So um, amending the code, we need to amend the code to make sure that the balance of power um, and is fair for everybody because this strong mayor form of government, I'm not sure if this applies. I'm looking for the thing on the agenda, but um, it, it's too much. So Try to work towards that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Nope. All right. Uh, any questions or comments from council members? If not, motion to close. Second. Motion from, to close from Councilman Miranda. Second from Councilman Seatra. All in favor? Aye. 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 Councilman Carlson, I think we left off with you, sir. Item 51. Yes, sir. I'd like to move uh, file number E2022-8. CH5 ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption ordinance of the city of Tampa, Florida, making revisions to city of Tampa code of ordinances, chapter five, building code amending section five dash one Oh five dot three application for a permit amending section five dash one Oh five dot three dot one um, action on application amending section five dash one Oh five dot three dot four time limit on single family residential dwelling amending section 5-105.7 refusal to issue permit uh, amending section 5-106.1 submittal documents amending section 5-106.5 retention of construction documents amending section 5-109.1 inspections and section 5-109 dot five inspection request repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict therewith providing for severability providing effective date second motion from council member carlson second from council member citra all in uh, all in favor roll call. roll call for a second reading roll call please her uh yes carlson yes maniscaco yes Vieira. yes citra yes miranda yes and goods yes motion carry unanimously all right Yes, sir. Next time, can I get the one with fewer numbers, please? I'll see. I'll see what I can do. All right. Item number 52. If you need to be sworn in and haven't been sworn in, please raise your right hand and we'll swear you in. That's virtual and uh, in-person participation. Thank you. All right. So everybody's been sworn in. All right. Good. All right. Item number 52. We have Annie Barnes. Go ahead. Good morning, Council. Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Item number 52 is SU2 2107 being presented for second reading adoption for 201, 203, and 205 South Howard Avenue. 
Uh, the request is a special use two for a bank uh, drive-in. Site plans were dropped off at City Hall yesterday. I'm available for any questions if needed. Do we have any questions at this time? No, no questions. Thank you. All right. Uh, I saw Jonathan Scott, but he's he's off camera, so no. Uh, I guess the applicant. Not there. No. Jonathan Scott's not here. You're the applicant. Are, you, are you the applicant? Yes. Sir. No, no, no. I saw him come on and off, but if we don't need him, no, it's fine. I, I, I was just. I, I still have one more question about this. Uh, with Jonathan. Scott? Yes, with Jonathan Scott, please. Wrong, Jonathan. I'm so. getting with Jonathan. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, if Jonathan Scott is on, yes, sir. Council Procedure. Uh, Mr. Mr. Scott, again, I, this you have entrances and exits on one-way streets that run perpendicular to one another. I, I, that has passed through transportation. Uh, yes, we reviewed that one. We were okay with it. I, I just I, again, I, I have concerns, and this is the only thing I have concerns about this this. Uh, application uh, I, I can just see right now in the future backups going on on both uh, what is it Cleveland and Howard so I thank you very much mr. chair thank you very much thank you very much any other questions nope mr. Moore Jonathan Moore Envision Advisors were the owner's representative and authorized agent on the project I'm here to answer any questions any questions mr. Moore you just heard my my comment mm -hmm. You, you have to admit, with, with entrance and exits, just two of them, on one-way streets going perpendicular to one another, I, I, I see this as a, as a traffic nightmare, especially during rush hour. The, there is a turn also out of the alley. Um, we are right turn only onto Cleveland, however. We don't want our uh, patrons to go into the residential side of the alley. Uh, it, you know, it, it is a small community bank. We, we don't anticipate a large amount of traffic we do have two drive-through lanes uh, lanes and we exceed the amount of parking spaces so um, we, we don't think that that will be an issue you said right turn on to Cleveland coming exiting from left the right turn into the alley right turn only onto the, the alley, alley not left turn, right turn onto the, on the alley Cleveland. into the resident I, I apologize yes. mr. chair thank you very much uh, mr. Moore thank you it's just understood future thought anybody else anything else sir no sir no? Do you have anybody here in the public that wishes to speak on item number 52? I see none, and we do not have any registered speakers for 52. May I have a motion to close? So moved. Motion to close from Councilman Goose, second from Councilmember Miranda. Councilmember Miranda, would you like to take item number 52? Please, sir. Thank you very much. Item number 52, SU 2 21 07. Ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption. An ordinance approving. A special use permit SU2 approving a bank drive in in a CG commercial general zoning districts in the general vicinity of 201, 203, 205 South Howard Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one thereof, providing an effective date. Second. We have a second from Councilmember Vieira. Roll call vote, please. Boots? Yes. Hertag? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Cedro? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Manny Scacco? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. All right, item number 53, Annie Barnes is on the line. Go ahead. Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Item number 53 is REZ 2189, being presented for second reading and adoption for 5202 South Puritan Avenue. The request is to rezone the property from RS60 to RS50 residential single family. I am available for any questions if needed. Any questions? No, hearing none. Yes, sir, Mr. Michelini. Uh, Steve Michelini representing the applicant. If you might recall, this uh, petition was reorienting the, the existing two lots and turning them so that they were consistent with the neighborhood and the other uh, houses on, along uh, Ballast Point. I respectfully request your approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number 53? Seeing no one, I know we have Gene Strohmeyer who is registered, uh, and Gene has been has been sworn in, I believe. Or yeah. no, you know what, what uh, Miss Strohmeyer, if we can swear you in, does she need to be on camera at this point? Yes. Miss Strohmeyer, can you um, turn your camera on? We need to see your face because it is a second reading and quasi judicial. 
Jean Stromar. Chair, she is currently self-muted. She would need to unmute herself and then she will also need to activate her camera so that she can be sworn in. Okay. Jean Strohmeyer, if you uh, will unmute yourself and please turn your camera on so that we can see your face and swear you in. She is currently not registered. Okay. Well, anybody else for public comment virtually? That is the only person. Can I get a motion to close? So moved. Motion to close Sorry. from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilman Seatra. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Councilman Vieira, would you mind reading item 53? Sure. Move ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption ordinance rezoning property in the general facility of 5202 South Puritan Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS 60 residential single family to RS 50 residential single family providing an effective date. Second. We have a, okay. All right. We have a motion from Councilman Vieira, second from Councilman Miranda. Roll call, please. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Hurtak? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Cedro? Yes. Vieira? Yes. And Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. All right. Next Thank is you item very much, number, Council. Thank you very much, sir. Item number 54, Miss Annie Barnes, go ahead. Annie Barnes, Dwell with Coronation. Item number 54 is REZ 21122 being presented for second reading and adoption for 409 South Fremont Avenue. The request is to rezone the property from residential multifamily 16 to planned development to allow for development of the property with residential single family detached in two family uses. Site plans were dropped off at City Hall yesterday and I'm available for any questions. Any questions at this time? All right, uh, I see a Mr. Dobson. Uh, sir, please raise your, raise your right hand and we'll swear you in before you speak. Do you swear or affirm you would tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Go ahead. Uh, no real issues here. I believe everything was found consistent by all the departments that reviewed, and um, we received a favorable vote last time. I'm just here to answer any questions. Do we have any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, seeing none, uh, do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number 54? I see no one, and the gentleman is the only registered uh, speaker. May I have a motion to close? Please close. Second. Motion to close from Councilman Citro, second Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Councilman Citro, would you mind reading item 54? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. File number REZ21-122, an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption. An ordinance rezoning the property in general vicinity of 409 South Fremont Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1, from zoning district classification RM16, residential multifamily to PD, planned development, residential, single family, detached, residential, two family, providing for an effective date. Second. We have a second from Councilmember Miranda. Roll call vote. Vieira? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. And Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Item. Sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Annie Barnes, item number 55. Thank you, Council. Item number, Annie Barnes, item number 55 is REZ 21125 being presented for second reading and adoption for 2501 North Glenwood Drive. The request is to rezone the property from RS 60 residential single family to RS 50 residential single family. I'm available for any questions. Do you have any questions at this time? All right. Uh, do we have an applicant for item number 55? Uh -huh. We do not have an applicant here. We have no one registered for 55. Do we have a motion to close? Second. Right. Is there anybody that wishes to speak on 55? No? All right. Motion to close from Councilmember Good. Second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Councilmember Hertek. Item 55. File number REZ 21-125, ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2501 North Glenwood Drive in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classifications RS 60 residential single family to RS 50 residential single family, providing an effective date. Second. We have a motion from council member Hertak, second from council member Miranda. Roll call vote. Carlson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Goods? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Miranda? Yes. 
Cedro? Yes. And Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Next up is item number 56. Yes, ma'am. Annie Barnes. <laughs> Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Item number 56 is REZ 2222 being presented for second reading and adoption for 3302 West Horatio, Horatio Street. The request is to rezone the property from RM24 to PD um, to allow development of the property for a place of religious assembly. Site plans were dropped off at City Hall yesterday and I'm available for any questions. Do we have any questions at this time? We do not. Uh, applicant, this is for 56. Jonathan Moore, Envision Advisors. I'm the owner's representative and authorized agent for First Presbyterian Church of Tampa. Recall this is the project that uh, the First Presbyterian Church of Tampa sold their property downtown. They're moving to South Tampa on uh, the property of an old Unitarian church that had uh, several non-compliant uh, zoning issues that we, we have brought that into compliance and asked for a few waivers. I, I do believe everything is found consistent. I'm here to answer any questions and I thank you for your support. Do we have any questions of the applicant? We do not. Do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number 56? We do not. And we do not have anybody registered. May I have a motion to close? Oh, motion to close from Councilmember Miranda, second from Councilmember Citra. All in favor? Aye. 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 Councilmember Goods, item number 56, if you'd like. File number REZ 22 22. What is being presented for second reading and adoption? An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 3302 West Horatio Street in the city of Tampa, Florida and more typically described in Section 1 from Zoning District Application, RM24, Residential Multifamily, to PD, Plan Development, to Place of, of Religious Assembly, providing an effective date. Original motion to approve said ordinance on the first reading initiated by Carlson Maniscalco on March 10, 2022, including that the applicant has met its burden of proof to provide competent substantial evidence. Further, that the development has conditioned and shown on the site plan and is consistent with the comprehensive plan and city code. Further, that the request waivers will, will not substantially interfere with or injure the rights of others whose property will be affected by the waivers. Further, that the site plan be amended to include the specified by Amy Barnes Development and Growth Management. We have a second from Councilman Miranda. Roll call. Miranda. Yes. Hurtak. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Vieira. Yes. Yeah. Cedro. Yes. And Goulds. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Council. Sir. All right, item number 57. We have, yes, sir, go ahead. Ross Amos, Development Coordination. I need to be sworn in, please. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm you would tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do. Thank you. Ross Amos, Development Coordination, presenting file number VAC 21 18 for second reading and adoption. It's a vacating request for the right of way and alleyway located south of Kennedy Boulevard north of Cleveland Street, east of Hesperity Street, and west of Lauber Way within the plat of Rosemont subdivision. The subdivision is to be of Tampa, Florida. A staff is available if you have any questions. Any questions of the gentleman? No? All right, Mr. Pressman, you are in person but registered virtually, so I'll scratch you out here. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I, I assume you prefer me here personally, Mr. Chairman, sure. but I'll waive a presentation unless there's questions or comments from the public, if I may. All right. Do we have any questions for the applicant at this time? Do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number 57? There is no one registered other than the gentleman that's here. Do we have a motion to close? I'll make a motion to close. Motion to close from Second. Council Member Hurtak, Senator Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Council Member Carlson, item number 57. Yes, sir, I'd like to move file number VAC 21-18 ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption ordinance of the city of Tampa, Florida, vacating, closing, discontinuing, and abandoning a right-of-way alleyways located south of Kennedy Boulevard, north of Cleveland Street, east of Hesperides Street, and uh, west of Lauber Way within the plat of Rosemont subdivision, a subdivision in the city of Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida, as more fully described in section one, hereof subject to certain covenants, conditions, and restrictions as more particularly set forth herein, providing for enforcement and penalties for violations, providing for definitions, interpretations, and repealing conflicts, providing for severability and providing effective date. Do we have a second? Second. Yes. Second from Council Member Hurtak. Roll call. Hurtak. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Vieira. Yep. 
Cedro, Miranda. No. Vieira. Yes. Yeah, okay. And Goose. Yes. Motion carried with Miranda voting no and Cedro being absent. I vote. Thank you very much. For item number 58, uh, we couldn't do this earlier because it was not 10:30. But we have a letter from Andrew Carnegie requesting that this item be continued to May 5th, and that would be under 10:30 a.m. public hearings on May 5th. Do we have a motion to continue? Second. Motion from Council Member Miranda, second from Council Member Goods. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. We go to item number 59. This is, uh, yes? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. You want a public comment on the continuance? No, I don't know if there's anybody here to speak to it. I just, that'll be fine, Council, okay. um, unless, unless there is anybody here to speak to it. Was there anybody here to speak on 58 by any chance? All okay, right, thank okay. you. I'll ask ahead of time before the continuance. There is no one registered. Item number 59, go ahead, Ross. I'd like to ask the clerk to share my screen, please. See my screen? Yes. Ross Adams, we have a coordination presenting Item file number VAC 22-01. The applicant is Mako Wash Incorporated. Okay. Proposed vacating request is to vacate a portion of the alley line south of John F. Kennedy Boulevard, north of Cleveland Street, east of Moody Avenue, and west of Howard Avenue. This alley was created per subdivision of the plat of Oscarana. The alley is located in South Tampa in the South Howard Commercial Overlay District. This application was filed November 2nd of 2021. The applicant owns all the property on the north side of the alley and the lot to the abutting south side of the portion of the alley that is requested to be vacated. The applicant's reason for this application is as follows. The alley was has become a loitering and strewn garbage area. It requires constant cleanup. It is unsecured and unsafe at night, complemented by a dark parking lot with no lights, very high windowless buildings on both sides that provide perfect CPTED negative environments. This alley is in the South Howard Commercial District and no existing code violation exists on the property. Again, he's requesting to vacate the east leg of a T-shaped alley located on 103 South Howard Avenue. The alley totals approximately eight, 1,820 square feet. The alley is completely improved asphalt paving and appears to be in use by the owners along the north and south portion of the alley as access to Howard Avenue. Salt Waste uses the alley for trash collection. Wastewater Tico Frontier facilities are located in the alley. The alley continues to the west of the subject alley and is improved. The alley of the east was partially vacated and no longer continues in its original configuration. However, the owner of the property was required to de dedicate a transportation easement over the property to allow for vehicular and pedestrian use over the parcel to access the remainder of the improved alley at that block. The yellow section is the requested vacating section of the T-shaped alley. Here's the north-south section, east-west section. The applicant's property is in red in the north and to the south of the proposed vacating. In pink is the proposed vacating request and the previous 20-foot uh, transportation easement dedicated uh, that I spoke of is in blue here to the east of the proposed vacating. Again, in red, the proposed vacating request is located within the Osmona Platte. Um, here it shows within in this section the area of the proposed vacating request, and again, the Osquana Platte subdivision here. This east west section of the alleyway looking east from Moody Avenue, this portion of the alley is the subject vacating. East west portion of the alley looking east from the intersection of the north and south portion of the alley, this is the subject of the vacating request. Again, east-west alley looking east from Moody Avenue. This portion is not to be vacated. 
east and west portion of the alley looking west from the intersection of the north and south portion of the alley. This portion is not to be vacated. Again, the north-south portion of the alley looking north from Cleveland Street. This portion is not to be vacated. Again, north-south section of the alley looking south from the east and west portion of the alley requested to be vacated. This is the applicant's property looking south from Kennedy Boulevard. These are abutting property owners, townhomes that are abutted to the north and south section of the alley that is requested to be vacated. Again, townhomes. I'll go around through these quickly. The recommendation staff objects to this vacating request based on responses received from transportation planning, traffic design, solid waste, and urban design. If the vacating request is approved by council, easement reservations are required overall for wastewater, TECO, Frontier, transportation, and solid waste. And I would like to point out that um, Annie Mikulski with Urban Design is available. Also, if you have any questions. Thank you very and much. And that completes my slide. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Councilman Goods. Ross, put back up the, the actual photo of the alley that's talking about being vacated. This section here. This is the this is the east and west section here, and the stop signs that you see are along the north and south section of the alley, the T-shaped alley. And here are the townhomes along the north and south section. And this this uh, easterly portion of the alley is requested to be vacated between the parking here and and this wall. All right. So what's what's past? Let's look at the stop sign going further, maybe to the to the, the east. Is that an open area alley too? Yes. So this is a straight through clean alley. Up. This is looking this is looking the other way. This is looking east. We were looking west from the previous image, and this is looking east. So if you can see here, the grass in the background past this fence, this is the section requested to be vacated. Okay, interest. Thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Any other questions? All right. Uh, we'll, we'll go to public comment. After, uh, Mr. Pressman, yes, sir. Go Can ahead. I hear from the applicant. You're the applicant. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Pleasure you said public, just want to be sure. Uh, I have a PowerPoint for you, if I may, please. Uh, this is VK22 dash. Zero, zero, many zeros, one, proposed alley vacating. Um, there's loitering, there's trash. It's a bad septed criminal planning area. And it also eliminates what we consider to be a dangerous public safety traffic condition. So this is the actual vacate area between Howard and um, uh, Moody on the other side. This is a city staff slide, which tells you the solid waste uses part of it uh, and the townhomes that are located. But solid waste access would still be provided on the other side of the alley. And we, could, we consider or propose you that there's a bad safety conflict here on the exiting of the alleyway that we're looking to vacate because as shown by the staff, there's a, there's a circuitous way that the alley continues on the next block. So by that I mean, as the Circle K was re-renovated uh, or redeveloped, the alleyway was continued, but was placed further back. So it's a, just a little skip to continue on that eastward function, but Howard is a one-way street. So when you exit the alley that we're proposing, you can see it's just a little skip around to continue on that eastward alley. And let's face it, looking to get a quick cup of coffee, want to get around traffic a little bit, they're going to skirt around it a little bit. So we're proposing or raising to you that the accommodation that was done in moving that alleyway in the next block entices a bad or 
very bad traffic element, again, because Howard is a one-way. So the alleyway is located next to this parking lot. It's the adjacent parking lot. You can see the townhomes in the back. And specifically the alley, that segment. Um, you can begin to see the very high walls, overbearing structures, which are very dark at night, which provide areas for people to loiter or to hide. This is the same element on the other side. And you can see even worse here. Septed planning has four basic elements, natural surveillance. Uh, there's very little surveillance except in part of it by the townhomes. Natural access control, so there's control or people can see that there's control, which there's very little. Territorial reinforcement, which there isn't. Met maintenance and management as well. So between those concerns, we thought it was supportable to bring forward for the city council to consider and approve. I appreciate your time. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Councilman Seed. Thank you very much. Mr. Pressman, do you have any uh, police records or documentation of, of arrests or loitering, or do you have any code enforcement uh, records of having to pick up trash or clear the alley out? Um, the car wash owner does do pickup from garbage because he has a pretty sizable portion along Kennedy. I do have traffic readout from the intersection which is about 30 accidents over a year. But I would do want to, I don't, I want to be completely clear that is at the intersection. It's hard to discern where those accidents occurred. Okay. Beyond that, th those are the only uh, data or records that I have. Do you have them physical on you today? I have the accident record, yes. May I? Please, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Wigginton, do you have anything, sir? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, you want, would you like to submit that here to the record from Mr. Shelby? Yeah, if I may, um, okay. I don't have a copy of it, so if I could just take a quick few pictures of it, and I'll give it to Mr. Uh, Shelby. Did you want to show it to the, or do you want to pass it up? Did you want to describe yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, let me just take pictures. Uh, Mr. Wiggins? No, I, 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 was, I was asking Mr. President I, if I you do wanted want to, to. I do want to emphasize again, as I communicated, because I don't want to misdirect anyone, that these are pulled from the intersection does not specify they are only incidents yeah, it's going to take about another three weeks right. to do and that. and mr pressman i'm sure we can give this back to you or we can make copies of right them. we could we could do that the question is whether you wanted to display those or did you want to I'll pass them. you'll pass them around thank you sir mr wigginton before we go to public comment thank you uh ron wigginton legal department i just wanted to make a uh point of clarification that the uh, ordinance is going to be reserving a permanent transportation both for uh, pedestrian and vehicular uh, traffic so they will not be able to close the uh, vacated alleyway okay. so it will remain open repeat that one more Mr. Wings. we are reserving a permanent transportation easement both for vehicular and pedestrian traffic so they will not be able to close the vacated portion of this alleyway. So solid waste can still come through, Ooh. pedestrians can still yes, access, sir. and what about the townhomes? They'll be the same way. They'll be able to access so it. So it's just through. really a, a, a legal thing to take over that parcel of land, but it won't be closed off to... People. That is correct. Yes, sir. So the residents that live there will not be affected other than they're driving on this newly, you know, the, the person's extended property. That is correct. So long as we maintain this permanent transportation easement, which is currently in the ordinance. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilman Carlson. Mr. Pressman. Could, sorry if I missed this, but could you, t considering what he just said, why, why would you all want to go through all this? What's, what's the benefit? I, I've discussed with the client. He does want to move forward. No, but I why? will say that we are looking at a little bit closer. So he, he does want to move forward, but still looking at it a little bit closer following today's hearing. I, no, sorry, my question was, considering that there's a, uh, what did you call it, a permanent transportation easement, why, why, would, the, why would your client want to do this, uh, to close this in the first place? What, what benefit is it to your client to close I, I it, if, it, if it's still going to be open to traffic and, and pedestrians? I understand. I believe that he feels it provides him more control of elements that are a problem in, in along the alleyway, which is trash and uh, crime issues. When and this I, happens, have, do they have, have to pay property taxes on it too? Do you all have? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so you all have to pay. Okay. 
Th that would be a ramification, yes, sir. Okay. And you're going to have to maintain it, too. That would be a ramification, yes, sir. Okay. Councilman Moran? I, I just wanted to along Mr. Carlson's, uh, and I believe that you're one of the finest presenters all the time you come here. You tell it direct. You don't hold anything out or anything else. But uh, I didn't realize that the, at the first reading, I realized the, the amount of uh, individuals that we were disturbing. There, there's quite a few. I don't know if they're here today or not. But I, I and then what, what we just mentioned, we're closing a piece of property, no matter where it's at, but yet we're leaving it open just like it was before it was closed, right? Uh, that, is the, that is my understanding, sir, yes. I get confused on little things. I'm really confused on this one. I'm asking and, what's, what's the point? And, Why well, go through I think what I think. I think that, and, and, and no reflection on you or your client or anyone else, but if this is, goes on, it's closed, we can say that later on, you can, another council can look at it and say, well, why did they close this when they, they, they paid for it and close it again? So I, I, I just, uh, and I'm not speaking in any way derogatory about you or your client, but I, I just think that this is a waste of time of your client's behalf to spend this kind of money, but you're going to leave it the same way it is. There's no benefit to your client by closing it if you're going to leave it open. I mean, it's like saying I want to get married, but I'm not going to marry you. I mean, I'm, I'm just making that up real quick, but I, I don't understand that. Or I'm in love with you, but I'm going to marry somebody else. We, <laughs> you know? Well, you're speaking very, I, I you're you're speaking very sweetly to me, <laughs> Councilman. I mean, um, I'm, I'm, get, I'm not trying to you or anybody, this but was, I'm trying to put it in perspective of my, the yes, way sir. I think. Th this was the direction I was given. Yeah, I, so I'm not, I mean, with that. Like I said, I think you're one of the finest ones that ever comes here and, and does your presentation. You're right with it. And I understand you have a client that's advising you on, on how they want it done, but I, I appreciate everything. Thank you. I, I will take this feedback back to him. Councilmember make sure you her time. Um, I have a question, I guess, for staff. Um, this will change the legal ramifications of this parcel as well, then. Any type of loitering or traffic accidents or anything the city would no longer be responsible for that. Um, well, it doesn't necessarily affect the fee simple ownership of the alleyway. It would remain in the abutting property owners. So if this was to be vacated, it would go to the center line and then each half would go to the abutting property owners. Uh, but if there's uh, accidents or any kind of traffic uh, considerations, then it would still in essence remain a transportation easement. So being on private property, there is some exposure to the property owners. Thank you. And, and that, would, that was going to be my next question. So who does the liability fall on? The property owner. Generally speaking, it would be a combination of, I mean, it would be impossible for me to predict what a court of law would be would hold, but I would say that they would, uh, everybody would uh, be involved in that litigation, including the city and the property owners. Wow. That's a, that, that's a lawyer's uh, dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> I also, if it's uh, appropriate, if I may, um, um, Mr. Shelby advised me that I should be going over the criteria for you guys to consider when you uh, make your consideration whether to approve or disapprove the vacating application. So some of the factors to consider are, is whether um, the vacating will alleviate the public costs of maintaining the alleyway, whether it will alleviate a public nuisance such as dumping or curtail criminal activity, whether it will foster redevelopment of the abutting, uh, abutting properties, and whether the abutting property owner's access will be totally or substantially diminished. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Pressman, th thank you for the information from the TPD reports. I was, I was hoping to get more uh, information on, well, as you were saying, the, the, uh, the, the crime, the dumping, the trash. That's, that's what I was looking for, and that's how I was going to base my, uh, my opinion. Uh, do you have any of those records? I, I don't. The only record, public record I have is the track, uh, the travel record submitted. And I know those photos were only taken one time, but that alley seemed very, very clean and well maintained. Um, do you have more specifics on the dumping? Uh, I can only tell you the feedback that I've received from uh, my client, the property owner, along Kennedy Boulevard. That has been a problem. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. We will now go to public comment. I believe there are a few members in the audience. If you'd like to speak, please approach the lectern and state your name. And um, I know you were all sworn in. Everybody stood up and raised their right hand. You'll have three minutes to speak. Yes, sir, go ahead. Thank you, council members. 
Uh, my name is Eric Sheridan. I am a property owner at the Moody Blue Townhomes. I actually own the property on the corner, affects the alleyway. Just for my credentials, I'm a civil engineer, licensed general contractor. I work in the precast concrete industry, so I am very familiar with traffic flow patterns and transporting large transportation vehicles. How do I display this on the screen? Are there it is. Go it? ahead. See it? Okay. Yep. So, obviously, this is our townhouse community. This is the car wash. This is the area and subject that wants to be vacant. Up till today, we didn't know what the what about the ordinance of still being able to use the the alleyway. Uh, up till now, we were assumed that uh, we weren't going to be able to still have access. But just keep in mind, Howard is a one-way road. Cleveland's a one-way road. Our surrounding alleyway around our community is two-way traffic. This alley is two-way traffic, and then Moody Avenue is two-way traffic with tandem parking. The closer visual, and these dimensions are approximate because I pulled them from Google Earth. This alleyway is only approximately eight foot three wide. This alley is only eight foot wide. This alley for two-way traffic as well is about 16, 15 feet wide. There was an illustration that was pulled, I believe by the owner's representative that showed uh, waste management. His illustration was incorrect. Waste management actually turns right and goes down to Howard. They don't come in off of Howard and turns into the alley. As you can see from this illustration, they're making a right turn and they're actually having trouble making the turn and they're, they're encroaching on the parking lot. Looking at these visuals, in the alleyway looking towards Moody Avenue, we have about eight foot roadway. This dark and scary alley that was discussed with big block walls was only installed recently because I had to call the city about the noise that this car wash was making and they had to lower the decibels and they made the wall taller. Here's the illustration of the alleyway going to Howard. It's about eight foot three. I understand they're saying we're going to have access long term. If they vacant, vacant this, we could still have access, but down the road, what happens if they decide they want to do something different, as you guys were discussing? Once if you have a car parked here and a car coming down this way, and we don't have access there, what are they going to do? Back up an alley that's 200 feet long? Everybody uses this road. The community, people that are driving around the city, waste management, Amazon. I don't see how this is a benefit to anybody. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Welcome to the board. All right, next speaker, please state your name. You'll have three minutes. Thank you, council members. Um, my name is Brandy Zikafus. I live next door to Eric um, in the building that directly abuts the alley. Uh, just one, uh, one standpoint over. Uh, to address the two main issues of crime and trash, I can tell you living directly next to the car wash and directly in front of the parking lot, the majority of the trash comes from the, from, you know, pieces of trash flowing over the car wash wall. I, this week on Monday, picked up a piece of trash out of my front yard and it was a prestige car wash receipt. Um, and the biggest piece of trash, try to, uh, Put this down here this right here is a big large piece of trash in the parking lot it is assigned from the car wash and car wash and oil change 1899 six foot eight foot sign that fell down at the car wash eventually made its way over to the parking lot there's no major source of trash in the alley there's a lot of trash that accumulates in the parking lot a lot of loitering in the parking lot at 12 30 a.m sunday night monday morning i called the non-emergency tampa police line because there were people tailgating in the parking lot, blaring music, drinking, smoking. Um, and that's an occurrence every month or two. So it, the alley isn't a source, in my opinion, of traffic, crime, trash. It's the dark parking lot could easily, the property owner could install lights. Um, you know, that's, that's where people are congregating. It's not the alley. Um, as Eric pointed out, I won't kind of go, go through it. He had good illustrations. The alley turning to Howard that's being requested to vacate is significant is a little bit wider. There's, I will show the portion that's proposed to remain open. 
there's a tree, there's a utility pole, there's another tree, um, making it more difficult to make that left-hand turn. And it's a lot more narrow than the more open option, making, making a right to Howard, which is why likely waste management, most delivery vehicles, um, you know, does it. The other piece, you know, from a safety standpoint, um, again, there's a total of 16 properties, eight fronting the alley that runs perpendicular to the vacated alley. I've lived there since November 17, so about four and a half years. I can't remember a single time in the four years, I guarantee it's a single hand worth of times that I would ever go out and go out to Moody and try to make a left on Kennedy. That amount of traffic, it just seems dangerous to me. I always go out and go on to Howard to make a left. Same thing with access to I-275. Uh, anything trying to get to Midtown, trying to get to Dale Mabry, I'm always going to go out to Howard and use the traffic light for a safe thoroughfare. If that's vacated again, realizing that now we might be able to use it for transportation purposes. But uh, my history with the car wash, the owner, the, the property owner, they haven't been great neighbors if, and there's no planned change of use. But if they ever plan to go and join the properties and do anything, it's just they haven't been great at maintaining their properties. I don't feel confident that they'd maintain the alley. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Next speaker. Yes, sir. Please state your name. Hi, my name is Michael Pahanek. I'm another property owner and vice president of the Owners Association. Uh, I echo everything the previous two speakers said. I would just like to show a couple other pictures to more <coughs> illustrate the type of neighbor that we're dealing with, the people who are claiming that there is trash and crime. Uh, this is just a daily example of their business, the lot that they have that uh, is adjacent to my property. Actually, I live right across the alley on the front side, the Moody side. Excuse me. Uh, that's just an overhead of the eyesore that everything is, the, the dumpster. This is just another picture of the dumpster. The trash is part of that problem because they just throw everything in this dumpster. There's nothing bagged. There's no care for it. Everything just blows around. Um, this is the uh, aforementioned car wash, which actually is the or where it was originally, which is about a half a block away in the front of their property. Just the type of care they take care of, or how they take care of their property. A couple more visuals here just to show what we're looking at, the people who are worried about how things appear. Excuse me. Um, and the, the other thing, just to, I live on the front side, the Moody Avenue side, so it's already, it's a small block. Trying to divert more traffic there is just going to be more dangerous. And as, as Brandy said, trying to make a left on Kennedy, Alpha Moody, is virtually impossible. Um, and even making a right during rush hour to try to get to Howard, which leads to 275, another difficult task to get over two lanes. So it really limits our access to go north and west. Uh, in addition, to go, if we go south, we run into Cleveland, which is a one-way, which runs into McDill, which is another one one way, or, uh, sorry, not McDill, Armenia, which is one way. So we're really just limited in where we can go with the growing population and around that area. We need more access to the road, not cutting off one of our few ways to get there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public speakers? We have one registered a Shelby Elliott. Is Shelby Elliott? Hello, yes, this is Shelby, can you hear me? Yes, but we need you to uh, turn on your camera and we have to swear you in. Are you able to turn on your camera? Uh, let's see. I think that I'm sharing. Yes. There we are, please raise your right hand and we'll uh, swear you in. Do you swear or affirm you would tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Very good, go ahead, you have three minutes. So I am a property owner at the Moody Blues townhomes, um, just um, adjacent, the building adjacent to um, the neighbors that just spoke. And I am um, just commenting and opposed to the, um, the request. <laughs> I'm so really just echoing what uh, my other neighbors have mentioned. Um, there is a safety issue if there's going to be more uh, traffic directed onto Moody from that, um, from the alley. Um, currently, we already have issues with speeding um, cars coming from Kennedy down to Cleveland, even though it's a very narrow street. Um, as Eric mentioned, there is that tandem parking. If you have a truck coming down the street, usually 
um, one vehicle has to stop and allow another vehicle to pass down the street. Um, also, um, I think Eric was mentioning, if there's vehicles that are traveling um, north from Cleveland in that um, alleyway that um, I think is perpendicular to the um, to the section that um, is is the request is being being made to vacate. Um, if they're going to back up, I don't really see that as being likely. If they can't use that section, they may um, may not back up all the way out of the um, alley, but onto the uh, driveways of those townhomes that back up to um, the alley, which we're we're in the process of repaving that. So I could potentially see damage from all of the um, vehicles. So, I mean, we're, we're placing um, pavers in that area. Um, I, I can see it potentially affecting our property values depending on what the car wash does to with that um with that parking lot we don't know what those plans are as everyone mentioned they haven't been good neighbors i have constantly it's you know on a weekly basis i would say there's trash receipts from the car wash even on the you know on the front on the moody avenue properties um and as you know brandy mentioned the the trash that i've seen has just been in the parking lot i've never been um had issues going down that alley if I wanted to go across the street to the um, to the gas station or you know utilize Howard. I've never felt in danger. I've never seen any type of criminal activity occurring there. You know the the eyesore does come from the car wash and from that um, parking lot. So I think that's it. Thank you for listening to my comments. Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Yes, sir, Mr. Shelby. I believe we have some ex parte communications that need to be placed into the record before we have a rebuttal. <laughs> if, if I may, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, I, I'm having my aide print this out. I literally just right now got a text, um, which I'm, I'm sending to my aide. It is from Nicholas Stocco with uh, Tampa Firefighters. It reads as follows, and I'm going to print out a copy for all interested parties. Uh, that's why I stepped outside of the room. Uh, good. May, may I read it? Please, that's the sum and substance. And nothing, nothing adverse. Good morning, comma. Anytime alleys want to be vacated, fire marshal's office should be aware for approval or denial based off of fire department access because we are eliminating right of ways and ladder access. When we eliminate right of ways, we eliminate we limit access. Um, I disclose that in full transparency because this is a quasi judicial matter. And it came in during the hearing. Yes, um, Mr. Citro. I received the same uh, text message from the same person. I immediately uh, did a screenshot and sent it off to my aide, which will be sending it to legal. So it couldn't go to the clerk? Or, or to the clerk of court, whichever you advise. Uh, I just want to disclose that. Okay, and now, um, and, and now. Um, and if, I, if I may, yes. if I may, and again, the, the individual who sent it, I'm sure had no, ill will or anything of that nature just for the public this is a quasi judicial matter and we may not have uh, discussions with anyone um, outside of that which is made public on this specific matter which is why Councilman Citra and I immediately disclosed this when I happen to see it and there's my wonderful aid with the document and I will give it to anyone who would like it including uh, Mr. Pressman or the same message? Same message, yes. Uh, okay. And Tim if you could print that out for me please so I could mm -hmm. hand it Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. I, I can just tell you that I'll never get a text because I don't bring my phone to the diner. Well, I don't have, we don't have our phone. I'm just telling you or so. whatever. Yeah. And uh, that way you take all the out of, of action and no it's, reflection or no one. I'm not saying anything it's easier. about it's myself. Easier. Yeah, and I'll just say if, if I received a text or email, I, I'm not aware of it. Um, That's I right. Looked at it, but yeah. but um, if I did, I, you know, we'll turn it in when when we get out. Thank you. And and if I can, Mr. Chairman, just to cap it off by saying to the public, please, as it was stated by the council, uh, please do not attempt to communicate with the city council um, by electronic means um, uh, during a um, uh, during a meeting. Uh, the meeting is supposed to take place in the sunshine. Thank you.
All right. That concludes public comment. Mr. Pressman, do you have any uh, follow-up or any questions for Mr. Pressman? Um, I will take these comments, particularly the fire department, to my client. We'll discuss it, and uh, I'll make the staff here, uh, the council aware. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Do we have a motion to close if there are no other questions? So moved. Second. Motion from Councilman Citro, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, for item number 59, what is the pleasure of council? Where do we leave off? Well, does anybody wish to take a stab at it? Miranda Councilman was Citro? Last. Who? Miranda was okay. last. Councilman Vieira, would you like to? <laughs> no, sir. Councilman Citro? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and again, for the record, I've had no, just for the record, again, given that text, I've had no communication with anyone on this matter outside of that which has been disclosed, just for the record, again. Yeah, I'm not just an elected official, I'm also a member of the Florida Bar. Thank you. I'll, I'll be more than I just might. I, I, will, I will read it. Uh, I, again, I concur with the council. I've had no communication outside of this, but the basis why I am going to deny it, as everybody on this council has heard, that in my opinion, the obstruction, uh, excuse me, the things that yes. were being said about junk trash debris and, and those sorts of things, it, I, I didn't see any evidence of that, either with police reports, code enforcement reports, and I do not feel it is necessary to close this right of way. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll read you right, you're going to deny it. I'll read you to where it goes. Yeah, you read okay. it. Does he get a second? Right. Go ahead, sir. I just want to be clear. Um, so you're looking for, you look, you're going to read the ordinance? Yes. I'm going to read it if it doesn't get a second. I mean, okay. <laughs> All right. Final number VAC-22-01. Uh, ordinance members in for first reconsideration. Orders of the City of Tampa, Florida, vacating, closing, discontinuing, and abandoning a right-of-way alley located south of Kennedy Boulevard, North of Cleveland Street, east of Moody Avenue, and west of Howard Avenue, within the plat of Osawana, a subdivision in the city of Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida, as more described in Section 2 here, subject to certain comments, conditions, and restrictions, as more particularly set forth herein, providing for enforcement and penalties for violations, providing for definition, interpretation, and repealing conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Is there a second? Is there a second? Is there a second? Yes, sir. Just a reminder that the um, maker of the motion um, would be have to vote in the affirmative. Is that uh, are you aware of that, sir? Just want to make that clear. Just want to make sure. I was reading the ordinance. See if we got a second. If he even gets a second, yeah. it dies. Okay, yeah. understood. Okay, and no second. Is there a second? No. The motion is Die. dead. Dies for lack of a second. Do we have uh, another motion? <coughs> this would be a motion <coughs> for denial. Chairman, just I mean I don't want to be here at eight o'clock. Yeah. each other so I, I think the council from what I see uh, mr. Goose did it uh, and not that he was going to vote for it he wanted but once he made the motion he got to vote for it that's the, the law you can second the motion and not vote for it, but if you make the motion you have to approve in the affirmative so just in the in time of safety I move to deny item 59 BAC 22 dash 01 uh, based on the information we received uh, from the, the departments of, uh, there's no evidence that says that, that the trash was generated in other ways to any preponderance which we saw during the hearing and that the benefit of closing the alley and remaining open at the same time under whatever conditions it was proposed uh, is, is not applicable because it makes no difference other than somebody wanting it for future reference and this alley is being used as the transportation for garbage uh, sanitation pickup for uh, emergency calls and for other things that are needed in this neighborhood and therefore I, I, I just don't feel that it's the right thing to do to move this alley and make it personal to one denying the rights or use of the alley to the other this alley is used uh, it's not an alley that's it dormant this alley from the information that we receive in the public hearing is uh, predominantly used by all and uh, it's uh, needed to, to move in case of fire, in case of uh, uh, even a police work that they have to use the alley, it's available. So we I have a motion. Tonight, based on those. Second. Okay. Motion from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilman Cedro. Roll call vote. Maniscalco. Yes. Vieira. Yes. 
Cedro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hurtag? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Goose? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Thank you very much. All right. Next up is item number 60. We have an email from Tim Johnson requesting to be continued, for this item to be continued to April 21st. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak on the continuance, just a continuance? Seeing none, and I don't have anybody registered. Uh, do I have a motion to continue this item to April 21st so for 1030? Time, time please again, so for the record so it's clear, 1030? Yes, 1030 for uh, April 21st. Motion from Councilman Vieira, second from Councilman Miranda, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. all right. Number 61, um, a motion. Was there a motion for? Is there someone here on 61? Oh, Was there a motion to continue on this or no? No. no. Oh, 62. No? Okay, go ahead, uh, Ross. Ross Amos, available coordination. I'd like to <laughs> ask the clerk to share my screen again, please. Ross is showing that you're already a um, presenter. Okay. Oh. Go ahead. Hey, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Ross Amos, Development Coordination, presenting file number VAC 22-08. The applicant is West Tampa Holdings LLC. Is a proposed vacating request. To vacate the unimproved alley lying south of Yukon Street, north of Seward Street, west of Seminole Avenue, and east of Central Avenue, or I-275. This alley was created per the subdivision plan of Irvington Heights. It's located in the East Tampa Overlay District. The application was filed on January 8th of 2022. The applicant owns a property on the west side of the alley that is requested to be vacated. The applicant's reason for the application is only to vacate the alley. This alley is in the East Tampa Overlay District. Existing code violations for this property for accumulations of overgrowth, and that is CLD 21 0003445. The applicant is requesting to vacate the alley that is located at 8607 North Seminole Avenue. The existing right of way is approximately 4,100 square feet. The alley is unimproved grass and does not show apparent use by budding owners. A tree appears to block the alley at the north end. Several utilities utilize the alley and require easement reservations. The alley does not continue north of subject alley. The alley originally continued to the south, but the alley has been vacated. The owners at 8608 North Central Avenue have sent an email regarding access to the rear of their property from the alley, and have sent an email regarding the concern is included in presentation along with photos of the rear of their parcel showing their parking pad. The applicant's property is in red. The proposed vacating request is in yellow. Here is 275 Central Avenue, Seward. Again, the alleyway in pink. This is the alleyway within the uh, plat of Irvington Heights. Again, just so, showing the area within the section. This is the alleyway looking south from Yukon Street. The alley is not improved. Here's the alley. This is the alleyway looking north from Seward Street. It appears to be used for construction materials currently for uh, houses under construction. This is the applicant's parcel looking south from Mida Street. North and south alleyway looking north from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard is not to be vacated. This is again the alleyway looking south at the portion of the alley behind 8608 North Central Avenue, which is this house here. And this is located on the alleyway behind 8608 North Central Avenue, and this is showing their parking pad. Rec 
recommendations are staff have no objections to vacating requests based on responses received from reviewing agencies. If the vacating request is approved by council, easement reservations are required for water, wastewater, TECO, Frontier, and Spectrum. The applicant must pay termination fees for TECO for a street lot, and you must meet all NFPA codes at permitting. Comply with Chapter 27 as regards to tree preservation and site design. And that's the end of my slideshow. If you have any questions, I'm available for comment. Any questions for Mr. Sammons? Nope. Do we have an applicant? Are you Mr. King Yonas? Yes. Yes, sir. Come on up. And you were sworn in. I know you raised your, your right hand, so you're good. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, so we, we And just state your name, just state your name. Juan Quinones, Go ahead. applicant. And um, basically, we just wanted to, uh, for the same reasons overgrown, the alley, we want to vacate it, uh, keep it simple um, for our property and for the neighbor's property. And it's also consistent with the rest of the um, um, area, basically. The alleys are being vacated throughout in that same area. All right. Any questions for the gentleman? All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Do we Appreciate have anybody it. from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Yes, please come forward. You'll have three minutes each to speak. Good morning. Good morning, please state your name, go ahead. My name is Wilfredo Guadalupe, and I'm backed up to the property that was just developed there. And my problem is uh, I was trying to get that alley closed a long time ago because of people uh, just being there and I appreciate the uh, city cleaning it every time I called and I wanna thank you for that. Uh, but there was a letter that was sent out to the previous owner and I, was, and I called the city to see if I can close that alley or take half of it because I was told that we were able to take half. Now, when I called the city, uh, they said that there wasn't such letter. And I just spoke to Mr. Cramps there and, and his wife, and they said they had possession of that letter. All I wanted to do was just move my fence up to, the, to, to my half so I can close it because people were living in that alley and throwing mattresses, and we were even finding needles. And I want to thank the police department as well because they come by and they, since they've been doing that, I wasn't, I'm, we're not, I have my grandkids there with my son that lives on that property. And he was chasing them away, so they were coming and they were kicking the fence down every time my son changed his mind. So that's why I wanted to do something about the alley. But I called the city and they told me I couldn't do anything. And now the developers came in and they just pushed all the way up to my fence, which I'm, um, a little bit upset about because I wanted to do something about that and I haven't been able to. So I just want to state that. And these gentlemen here are also in the same predicament. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, before the next speaker comes, I want to make sure we, we advise the neighbors and uh, the good people who live there what they have to do if the alley, in case the alley is closed. There was some four or five items that came up. One that caught my eye was paying the fee to Tico for closing up some light that they have or something. And I want to make sure that they know if, what the cost is. I don't know. I myself don't know. I don't know if any other member knows what that is. Is this to pay for the light pole? Uh, yeah, it was something that was brought up by the uh, city uh, making the presentation. And it was here, there was four or five items and I didn't have time to memorize them all. But the one that caught my eye, of course you have the, there it is. Tico Street. Right? Tico, uh, the, you, you have to, even when you close the alley, you have to get permission for water and wastewater lines to be clean and, 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 and that nature. But the one that caught my eye was applicant must pay termination fee to Tico for street lights, whatever that is, I don't know. That's what I'm asking the city if somebody can make clarity Unless they're talking about these poles here, I, I don't know exactly what they're talking about. And what amount of dollars are those? Well, it would be nice to yeah, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna know, and you're gonna find out right now. Gracias. Thank you, uh, Ron Wigginton, Leo Department. Um, as far as the, uh, the street lights termination fee, since it's currently in our alleyway, city of Tampa pays for that connection and for that cost. 
Uh, however, it's been, it's been brought to my attention that the applicant and TECO have made an arrangement to uh, terminate that service and to pay for the termination fee. I'm not uh, familiar with the cost or the arrangement between the two. I just want to make sure two. that all parties are understanding what's happening. Indeed. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, next speaker, please state your name. Good morning. My name is Ralph Kreps. My wife and I own the property at 8608 North Central. We received a letter in the mail um, about proposal to close the alleyway. Uh, we do have a parking space back there. So if we take the alleyway away, I lose that parking space. That's the only issue we really have with that. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. You. Any questions at this? Well, I have a question. What? And, and my question is, uh, when I called the city, if I would have known that, I would have paid for that. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, there's, there's no way to, there's no way to find these things. Uh, yeah. And, and I have, uh, Thank you so much for bringing that up because I just learned something. Yeah, I, I and, just and if, I it, just and if it. it causes something, I don't mind, you know, being part of the cause. I, I just like to get that cleaned out and safety for my grandkids. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. All right, we go back to the applicant, sir. Do you have anything else to add before we close? Yep. No. I mean, if you're good, you're good. But we are good. I'm good. Okay. All right. Are there any questions for the applicant? No questions. There's nobody else. Uh, there's no one registered for this. So I believe that's it. Do we have a motion to close? So move. Second. All right. We have a motion from Councilman Citro, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, who wishes to read item number 61? Would anybody like to read 61? This is to vacate the alley. Uh, let me read because I'm getting hungry. Council, you can, yeah, Councilman Miranda. Item number 60, Mr. 60, what is it, 61? 60. 61, 61. 61? Yeah, what's Yes, I'm old. sorry. Uh, item number 61 is found on VAC 22-08. It's an uh, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. Ordinance in the city of Tampa, Florida, vacating, closing, discontinuing, and abandoning a right-of-way alleyway located south of Yukon, north of Stewart Street, east of Seminole Avenue, west of Interstate 75, Central Avenue, within the plant of Iverton Heights, a subdivision in the city of Tampa, Florida, Hillsborough County, more specifically described in section one thereof, subject to certain covenants, conditions, and restrictions, and more particularly set forth the way provided for enforcement and penalties for violation, providing for definition, interpretations, and repealing conflicts, providing severability, providing an effective date. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Miranda, a second from Councilmember Citro. Roll call vote. Cedro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Vieira? No. And Goulds? Yes. Motion carried with Vieira voting no. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 5th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to withdraw item number 62? Second. Motion to withdraw from Council Member Goulds and Council Member Citro. All in favor? Aye. We are in recess until 1.30.